All right, guys. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome back to Sansi Saga, uh, the Heroes of Hysteria uh, D&D campaign that we have here for you on the Delta Cryptid channel. Um, let's see. We are back at it again. We've got the full cast back together again. Let's do a quick round of intros. Let's start with Button. Hello, my name is Button. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. I am Blue Blue Button on social media, and you can catch me at twitch.tv slash the welcome in on Saturdays. And I play Cressida, also they, them. Boom, perfect. Yeah. And then. Hello, I am Hannah. I have she, her pronouns, and you can find me on Instagram at hannahbird826. And I play Pim, our little bard of the party. Perfect. All right, Nigel. I'm Nigel. I play uh, Lunazra. I am he, him. Lunazra will be she, her. Uh, you can catch me on Instagram at yo soy Nigel, two underscores between the words. Like yo underscore underscore soy underscore underscore Nigel. I'm, the between the I'm just, I'm just being, I'm just being annoying. Max. I will be playing <laughs> at Nord today. And as you know, I am Max and I do not have any social media because I hide from the world. You may not find me. That's a challenge. <laughs> cool. I don't know if you want to do that, but uh, you moving on, Ollie. Ronnie yeah, Sam. my turn. I am Raul Alejandro Gonzalez Enriquez, but you can call me Ollie. Or like it's the Stratus, just like in this show and online, it's the same name. Uh, we both are he hymns, and you can find me on Twitter at Cryptid Delta, where pretty much anything that we do on this channel will be also posted there, along with random shit that I draw sometimes. Mm -hmm. There you have it. Um, and I am David. I go by Zenokami on various places on the internet. Um, uh, he him pronouns, and cool. I will be our DM for tonight. Okay, so shall we, guys? No socials. We shall. No socials. I'm not. A, I'm not of the socials. All right. So, at our last meeting, our party had dissected an alien creature that was slain in the defense of the Gripley village. After a gruesome discovery, they learned about the missing crew of the Wild Hunt, a ship now stranded in the Frog Grove after the last wave. It seems that the crew had vanished while pursuing a white ape that attacked the small settlement. In the wake of these revelations, our adventurers set about uh, taking their first rest and distributing the items they had in their possessions. Uh, Cress had initiated a successful contact with Brock um, and learned a, gotten a bit more insight into some of the current events. After their rest, they oversaw a meeting between Idris, a UNT of Sra Ras and the pawn mother of the frog group. An agreement was struck. A tentative harmony would hold pending a gesture of commitment by the Yuan team. The gesture in question being the reinforcement of the frog group. Perhaps by implementing the knowledge of Sra Aras to protect this little vulnerable community of Gripley, a more genuine peace might be forged. And so our merry folk were tasked with venturing into the wilds salvaging what they can from the debris of the honor and perhaps gleaning more insight into the whereabouts of the missing crew of one captain flintlock so we are picking up you guys haven't quite don't worry about the pup believe me dogs bark um so we are picking up uh, i'll say let's let's say we're still in the frog grove but i want to give you guys a chance if you thought about anything between now end of session and now in terms of stuff you'd like to do before you guys set out, you still have that opportunity. Otherwise, we can. You guys are welcome to set out whenever you'd like. Uh, Lycus would like to talk to the person who conducted the autopsy. Okay, sure. Yeah, you can find him, the young uh, teenage human on uh, the medic of the Wild Hunt. You also had a long rest. Just you did have a long rest. <laughs> yep. So go ahead and adjust that for you. And if someone wants to fill in Max on Discord about item distribution and stuff like that, if if he has anything to adjust. Will do. Okay. So, Lycus, run. You're, he's still in the ward. He's still kind of like cleaning up the, the counter, the table, right? Um, sliding the body of the creature off into this kind of uh, linen canvas or canvas sheet, right? As it's kind of rolled up in the side. 
Hey, buddy. Uh, uh, yeah? So, this might sound a little weird, but I was wondering if you still had that heart on you. The, the heart? What? Yeah, since this used to be an orc, I figured there are some rituals I'd like to take care of personally. Uh, you know. Uh, kind of looks around. I, I don't know. Did you, did you clear this with the captain? Which one? Me? Hammond. Flintlock. Captain Hammond Flintlock. <laughs> Captain Flintlock, yeah. No, but uh, I don't see much reason why it wouldn't be a problem. It wouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, dead body, got to get disposed of anyways. Figured I might as well keep a part of it for this small, uh, you know, death ritual. It's uh, uh, cleansing a goodbye. Um... Roll me a persuasion check. Fair enough. Unsure. You're gonna Khaleesi it, right? You're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> he is uh... the mother of dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a 15, but I my tablet won't connect to the internet because I forgot I'm got you. in a new house now. So let me open up. <laughs> I got Gibiana. you, I got you. You rolled a 15, you said? Yeah. Your modifier on persuasion is a plus two, so 17. Ooh, and, uh, okay. Looks around and he goes, All right. Uh, yeah, okay. Look, I don't want to, I don't want to get in anyone's way. And you're right. We're, we, Captain said just burn the thing. So I suppose you won't mind if you took the heart. Um, give me a second, I guess. Uh, goes over, opens up the canvas. He pulls out, you know, puts on like these kind of linen gloves and kind of content warning. <laughs> Reaches into the chest cavity and pulls the chest cavity open and kind of slowly starts to carve it out. And he successfully yeah. procures for you a orc heart. Beautiful. And I believe that is probably not as light as you might think my friend <laughs> it's about six pounds so you can go ahead and put it in your is, inventory and put it, set the weight to six pounds is that because it's bloated or is that just the size of an orc heart that's the size of an orc heart <laughs> fuck will he drained there's nothing else there like you can squish it like a sponge maybe it's lighter <laughs> it's also not just an orc heart anymore. Yeah. Like, whatever. So, yeah. They, yeah. Hey, I'm going to send you a little quick something on Discord, my friend. Sounds good. And there you go. All right. So, like as you successfully procured yourself, uh, the heart of this aberration. All right. Anything else you'd like to do? gives it to you. He's like, oh, here you go. Um, I guess rest in peace. He says, kind of looking at the heart as he hands it over to you. <laughs> yeah, it'll uh, it'll feel better. <sighs> and as you're as you're just about to head out, he goes, oh, wait, um, you're heading, you're the Pim is in your crew, right? Yeah, yeah. You guys are heading out into the wilds, I heard. We sure are. Give me a second. Kind of goes back to his desk, kind of rummages around, comes back out and says, uh, can you give this to her for me? Just say you found it somewhere or whatever, you know. Okay. Uh, what is it? A, a, he hands you a vial. Uh, it looks <laughs> like a health potion. Hmm. Aww. Like someone's got a secret of my room. Well, this is cute. Uh, yeah, I'll make sure she gets this. It's not cute or anything. I'm just, you know, she just seemed like she could use it. The rest of you look pretty tough, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm out with <laughs> the potion of wonderful vigor. Don't you worry. Uh, I give him, I'm going to give him a slap on the back and jump off. All right. So, anybody else? Anything you'd like to do before you head out? Cress. Yeah. I see some nodding, and I also see Ednor. So let's do. We'll do Cress and then Ednor. 
So it's good. All right. I would like to go to Captain Hammond Flintlock first. Okay. And ask for a description of uh, Cassius Bratfang, the person okay. we're looking for. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you can find the captain um, in his quarters, right? Uh, as you kind of step in, right? Uh, like Think a, of a respectful he, knock. Like, uh, yes, well, come in. Hi there, Captain. I'm sorry to bother you. Um, we oh, didn't get all. a description of Cassius Bratfang or the rest of your crew. I was wondering if you could provide one. Ah, of course. Yes. Um, well, Cassius, my our first mate, um, you'd recognize her quite easily. She's a Leonin. Tall, broad, uh, gray of fur. Something of a scar over her neck where she from the fighting pits back in Muldan or Dan, where she was a slave once. Carries herself quite proud. You can't miss her. Uh, with her was also would be our shipwright. His name is Rish. Have you ever seen a Loxodon before? Have I seen a Loxodon before? Uh, roll... Roll charisma. Just a general charisma check. Charisma? Yeah. I rolled a natural one. Okay. Unfortunately, you've not seen any Loxodons before. All right. right. She's described kind of seeing, you know, the lack of recognition on your face as uh, an elephant person. Tall, broad, gray of skin, long trunk. His name is Raish. He's our shipwright. Understood. Um, do you have any items belonging to either of them? Perhaps. Give me a moment. They're actually, yes, they should have their something in the crew's cabin. You can feel free to take a look. Anything you find out there should belong to any of our remaining crew. Um, they have the lodge books, the, the pair of them. They. I'm so sorry. They have the log books? The large bunks. Oh, the large bunks. Derp a derp. All right. Thank you very much. Mm hmm. They will go look for something. All right. So you head into the crew cabin. Uh, roll an investigation check as you kind of enter the space. You actually spend the night here, so you can go ahead and roll that at advantage because you actually are familiar with the space. Is there any chance that I saw Crest coming in? I would Nothing say... Nothing sneaky. Yeah. I'd say you catch Crest coming out, going over to the cabin, the crew's cabin. Cool. Uh, would it be all right if I join? Sure. Yeah. Okay, oh, so the two of you, yeah. Oh, they were just greeting him. Um, looking for something of Cassius's or uh, Raish, their shipwright. The two oh, big bunks and the cruise captain. Or that's quarters. smart. I forgot all about that. Uh, you, think they got, you think they left anything sweaty around? That is what I'm looking for. I imagine you have a decent nose yourself. <laughs> I, I like to think so. Hey. All right. Well, was with your... that, yeah. it was a 14. 14, okay. With a 14, and Lycus' assistance, um, because Lycus is, is assisting, and we already had advantage from earlier, I'm just going to give you a plus two on that. Um, so we'll call it a 16, right? And so with the roll of a 16, uh, easily enough, you're able to find not only their bunk, right, but even a couple of, you know, uh, loose clothing items, you know, sashes, tunics, um, probably the easiest ones, or probably the one that's most that stands out the most, is actually a tool belt. Right? Uh, there is a large tool belt that you know probably would be like almost triple Cress's uh, waist, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as it is, as you can tell very easily that it is for someone of larger stature. I imagine right? this belongs to Raish. All right. Um, they'll gather up the items for the scent. Go ahead and add Tinkerer's tools to your invoice. To your. Uh... They're not mine, but I'll I'll carry them. Yeah. yeah. But you have access to them in the time that you have them. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, do you have an idea? I know you traveled with Captain Idris. Do you have an idea of what equipment we're looking for besides sun sails? Uh, 
he kept referring to some power suit, I'm assuming uh, sort of like their ship, highly advanced thing you get inside of. I don't know. The, their stuff, their powers were beyond me. I think I saw someone using it during the time we were on the ship. I've seen someone using something like that. Oh, you have? Yeah, Pim's talented. Oh, you guys must be pretty well-traveled then. No, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Not exactly. I like to think that you barked. <laughs> I'm so sorry. She's so upset. I'm home alone and she always gets stressed. Uh, oh, it's worry. okay. Yeah. Uh, Press has a quick little um, uh, shape shift <laughs> slip up. <laughs> nah, I, well, uh, I guess we're going to change that. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, just, I was wondering, I was hoping to ask uh, if this isn't too personal. Uh, seeing as you are, and he just kind of looks you up and down, not really from this area. Do you know anything about uh, where people might be? Do you know anything about the sea elves? Uh, uh, very little. I dealt with a few of them during my pirate, you know, young pirate years, but uh, mostly they're just fun people to hang hang with, as far as I know of them. Have you ever been to a sea elf city? Uh, once. I... Someone helped me get down there, and then I didn't really know what else to do. Down <laughs> where? Like... Ooh. Listen, I was drunk for at least four <laughs> weeks during that time. It'll be Zell and then something else. Mm, I'm gonna go with... And David, tell me if I'm lying. Zell. Zell, Zell? <laughs> The Zell. The Zell. Um, roll me history. All right. A disadvantage because you were drunk. So that <laughs> Damn it. That was a 19. Oh. All right. That's a five. Mm, and my history is a negative one. So. Okay. So what? four. Uh, with a total of four. On your voyages, you had some pretty wild nights. You had some pretty wild days, pretty wild, maybe weeks. Um, you guys did spend a lot of time out in open water, right? And you know that there are primarily two CL cities, east and west, right? Um, which one you went to? It's all a blur. <laughs> it was all... Uh, Corals and very strong sea elf liquor derived from various, you know, sea creatures. Right. Yeah. You know, best guess, I got nothing. Uh, but damn, your people can party. All right. Well, if that is what you remember, then I imagine the fact that we live in deep sea trenches may have escaped your notice. And all of these are submerged entirely underwater. And that our transportation is entirely aquatic. My I'm people's aware. civilization has been destroyed if the water is gone. This, your civilization may have been destroyed. Doesn't mean your people were. You I have survive. no idea. I came out of that ship you told me nothing about what had happened until I found Lunazra. Hmm. Okay. What okay. I know is what I have been told by you, which is not much. But I know enough to know that nothing will ever be the same. Well, wasn't perfect. Isn't perfect now. We'll figure it out. So compassionate. They walk out. <laughs> all right we're gonna leave those two there Edinor, i think you had something next yeah i was going to find like where the main group was it sounds like we're a little scattered right now a little bit right so, um i would say pretty much everybody's is kind of hanging out near the wild hunt okay. um 
that's where the Yuan-Ti have kind of set up shop, right? Mm-hmm. The the lizard folk are also, you know, close by, not exactly mingling with everybody. The one exception <coughs> being Gazalik, the the older shaman, mm-hmm. um, who is, you know, pretty much stayed pretty close to the to your crew. I do want to say that I'm like because we we were we have a d- general direction to go, and I'm kind of not too far out, but like kind of like. A little bit outside of the village. Okay, yeah, where is sort of, I'm waiting I for. Think, like, I'm, I'm also like looking for Luna specifically as well. So, okay. So I guess I'll have to go ask around, <laughs> or can I see sure. Luna? I'll uh, say you catch Luna. Uh, you catch Luna on her way out. Okay. I feel like we maybe talked about a meeting spot on the edge of town. Yep. Sure. So what I, what I'd like to imagine is that cause I'm waiting there because I think everyone had something to do back. So I. Not me, so I'm there with the decanter casting geyser, so it shoots up and then so rain comes down and I'm just sort of like like uh you know, just sitting down enjoying the relaxation from the heat for a second or two. His own your own her own private oh. rain shower? Pretty much, yeah. Like one of those water parks. All the, all the grippler are like getting closer, you know. <laughs> oh, Luna! Luna went to the edge of town, right? Oh yeah, I guess. Yeah. So they, they're just watching from a distance, knowing they can't make it to them. <laughs> just like, uh... say, Luna, are you, are you trying to kind of have this moment to yourself, pretty much? No, it's just hot, and I have this okay. item, so I'm just trying to. <laughs> Might as well just okay. use it, right? Yeah. So, um, I'm just watching this geyser as I'm hot and sweaty from helping start to do all the building and whatnot during the last session, working with the children. And uh, I walk up <clears throat> to Luna. <clears throat> Luna, I heard that you finished identifying some items. Also, apologies for my voice. One of the Gripley accidentally gave me not water, but Whatever the hell that was brewed. So, uh, sorry, I'm still working through it right now. So, just apologies for the voice. <laughs> oh, that's okay. And I'll stand up and I'll get a cast prestidigitation to slowly just sort of dry off over time. Um, I'm like, I'm like, catching whatever raindrops are coming down. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, ah, I think you have some. Here, I was able to identify some items provided by. Yes. 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 I was wondering if uh, there would be anything of use or if uh, they've all been claimed. If they have, it's not the end of the world. I'm quite suitable on my own. It's just more of a curiosity. So I heard we're going to be moving out soon. Based on what I have in my opinion, I would say perhaps you might have some useful staff. Although, are you a sword and board? Well, I do utilize it from time to time. I guess uh, I wouldn't say sword. I have my nice sensor, you know, very different. But it all depends on uh, utility. I'm sure it'd be less threatening if I wandered around with a staff in the town, perhaps, than wandered out swinging my sensor. But um, if you have more use for it, you can keep it. Do you utilize? Another magical item such as that? Well, attack. I'm more of the close distance sword striker myself. Well, you distance. know, I could attack from a distance. I have some use out of it. That's true. Well, do you, are you attached to it? Is there anything else? In yes. I've grown quite fond of it since the yes. time that I got it. Well, I mean. I would hate to just take it from you. Well, thank you. No. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Where oh. is the rest of you? I think we to should there <laughs> last minute things. It's at this point you, the rest of the group, uh, Cress, uh, Pim, and Lycus, the three of you are kind of catching up. Oh, yeah. I just want to do one thing before I group up sure. with everyone. Absolutely. So I uh, will kind of mosey off into a spot that no one else is currently. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to put my goggles on. Okay. And um, I, well, I pretty much wear those always. So I put them on for the day after my long rest. 
And I'm just gonna look around. Nobody's watching. And I open my backpack. Little perception check. Okay. Ugh. I always forget to take my eyes out. Perception is really good. It's an 18. You don't see anyone watching you? Okay. And um, I open my bag and I shuffle some things around and I'm looking for something. I don't want to take it out of the pack completely. Um, but I want to cast identify with my glasses on the thing that no one else knows I have. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. Um, I will give you the info of what you get from that uh, later tonight. Right. So I do that and I close my pack, throw it on my back, and I catch up with the others. Okay. All right. So yes, the three of you then, um, you meet you meet up uh, Pim with Cress as they are coming off of the the wild hunt, Lycus following a little bit behind. Um, and as the three of you kind of make your way over towards your meetup spot with Edinor and Luna, you guys press and like us with your passive perceptions as you guys are approaching, you can almost still see just a little bit of the, the rainbow in the air from where the, the geyser, the, the sprinkles are still kind of slowly falling down. But you arrive and you are now all together. Oh, like yes. I, uh... I forgot to mention this. Uh, I got a little overexcited when I was really looking into that uh, scarf that you have. Um, it belongs to a specific lineage. So I'm not sure if you might get the most benefit out of it, but just wanted to warn you. Uh, okay. Um, I don't remember. I'm not super familiar with magic items. Well, I was never much of a hoarder. Uh, as it could really do sleep. more harm than good. Um, uh, well, I didn't really sleep super well last night, and I haven't been able to try it out. You said it can give me some powers, right? If you properly attuned to it, that's got to be a D&D thing. Uh, well, I mean, I can always try. Can he try to activate the, the tippet? You can try, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna do that. Okay. Give me give me the attempt. What does it look like as you're trying to to activate this item? So, it has to do with the teeth, right? Like you, you yeah, pull you have one to pull the teeth. In. Yeah. So I think he's gonna pull one of the teeth off and bite it. Okay. And <laughs> that's okay. his best guess. Okay, like us, you you. You pull the tooth out, right? And you actually are surprised by how quite how easily it gives, right? It just kind of slides right out. And it's a long fang, right? You kind of take it. I mean, it's about four inches, right? It's the, the top and then the whole root kind of going up into it. Um, and you put it in your mouth, you bite down. Roll me a constitution saving throw, please. <laughs> All right. All right. 13 plus 3. 16. 16. Uh, with a 16, you manage to stifle off something of a gag reflex, right? Um, and you even feel a little bit disoriented as you're, as it kind of like makes contact with you. You get a little bit of like a lick, right? You can start to feel just very kind, kind of dizzy, right? Your skin starts to, your, your joints start to ache a bit. You can tell that there's something about this that is just not agreeing with you. Um, I don't, I don't think, I think someone else should hold on to this. Also, don't, don't lick it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I was not planning on it. <laughs> yeah. 
He's just going to tip, though. Would you lick it? Yeah. He's going to carefully try to put the tooth back in. He's like, oh, no, <laughs> this works. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it goes back in. It goes back in. It's a little, it's a little wobbly, right? You get the sense that you know if you kind of shook the thing's head, it might just pop right back out. But it, it's, it's in. Yeah, close enough. Mm-hmm. Anybody got mending? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they mend it. Yep, it's good. Solid back. Beautiful. All right. So your group is now collected, right? You guys are at the border of heading out, right? So. Mm-hmm. What's the plan here? Heading right. out into the wilds, and what's our objective? Where are we going? What are we? They've looking? been gone oh. for three days, correct? The crew. The crew, yes, yep. And they were in a north. They were in a northeasterly direction. I don't have. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. No, you're correct. Do we have the ability to track them? I do. Oh, yes. How perfect. Uh, can I transform? Like, how long does it take to transform? Uh, an action. Huh. Yeah. Um, I and I will also just mention too something that you know might have kind of gotten lost in the sauce of stuff, right? Is the the honor, right? The ship whose equipment and stuff you're looking for. Kind of re-listening to the episodes, I realized that it actually crashed down pretty fucking close by, mm-hmm. right? So as far as kind of the stuff, you know, you can you can even see, you know, areas out and about where you can even see like you know debris where it kind of like came in kind of close to the frog growth and stuff you know the yuan and the automata are kind of busy kind of looking around at that stuff and collecting the stuff that's close to home but you know that the, the you suspect you know just your average intelligence is that this debris didn't like land miles away mm-hmm. uh but yeah i want to transform into full wolf mode full wolf oh. mode okay yeah uh yeah like is just gonna sort of hop skip and like jump out of his clothes and into a full wolf uh he's 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 this big uh just like classic gray wolf uh but with a little uh patch of purple right in his (laughs) chest chris it's like it's kind of like what you do it is quite a bit like what i do you guys have a lot in common you think so Press and Edinor, or who's proficient in medicine? Anyone proficient in medicine? I believe I am. I I'm just good at it. Yes. You're just I'm good at it. I'm proficient at medicine. You're proficient in medicine. Havsies. Havsies, oh. Pim, you can roll too then. Oh. Edinor and Pim. Uh-huh. Go ahead uh-huh. and roll medicine checks real quick. All right. I got an eight. Eight. Okay. I got a ten. Okay. Oh my god, I am good at medicine. Go for it. <laughs> do it. Because I think it. you I think you had gotten a pretty good one before on something regarding I, like I have a plus five. Um plus four. I just rolled yeah, that's, six. That's fair. <laughs> uh twelve total. I didn't roll great either. Yeah. Okay. No, Average of nothing, ten. Nothing Average. Nothing There's kind of nothing remarkable at the moment. I mean, obviously, you know, you're the half work turning into a wolf is somewhat <laughs> remarkable, but nothing beyond that at the moment. Beyond Can your I... reactions, yeah. Have I? I know that I have experience with folks who shift. Mm-hmm. Does this seem similar or different in any ways? I'm going to say. You do recognize that this is different. You've seen shifting before, right? You've known folks who have contracted lycanthropy, right? But the ability to turn into a wolf, right? Like an actual wolf instead of just like the hybrid form, <laughs> that is different. That's not one that you've you've come across often. Wait, and it also this... doesn't seem druidic in nature. Also, it does not appear druidic in nature. There's no sort of you know, you're sensitive to that sort of magic, right? Um, and you can, you get the sense that whatever sort of magic or whatever sort of, you know, thing that kind of happened to like us here, right? It was a very conscious thing, right? It was on his terms and it didn't appear to be like particularly magical. More mechanical. I'm going to go up to him and say, can can you still understand me? Uh, 
You can. I can. Uh, yeah, I'm going to switch back. I, I can do it back and forth. Like, it's not a problem, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to switch back. Uh, I guess I'm naked. Uh, you are naked oh. when you switch back. Uh, just covering my crop. Yeah, I can understand you guys. Um, <laughs> Chris covers them. <laughs> <laughs> she's at the most unfortunate height they're just like no <laughs> i don't yeah. think so uh luna's got everything back. measured at this point <laughs> uh, I think, memory coming in. uh uh yeah i i can i can understand you guys while while i'm while i'm like that i think with that with my nose uh i might be able to have at least some advantage uh yeah. at this point i'm Got my coat covering up my crotch. Give me ten minutes, Lycus. Um, we can communicate while you're in that form. Um, I will ritually cast Speak with Animals mm-hmm. before we head out. Okay. During yeah. those ten minutes, uh, Pim. By the way, yeah. Uh, I dig through my coat pockets. So that pretty boy who did the uh, the slicing and the dicin. Well, Dave, Rick, they say is that. <laughs> that one. Uh, he wanted you to have this. I think he uh, wants you to uh, stay alive, I suppose. Oh. As opposed to the rest of you. Well, that's pretty darn sweet. And I, I take it. So. <laughs> hmm. Just puts it in her back. Blushes a little bit. <laughs> okay. So we've got Speak With Animals cast. Pim, go ahead and add a health potion to your inventory. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay, and you guys are headed out towards the northeast, right? Okay. Who is kind of leading the walk here? I imagine Cress and Lycus. Cress and Lycus? Okay. We have a scout, or are we staying pretty close? I'd assume we're staying pretty close. Okay. Yeah. What's our what's our marching order as well? I'm I'm probably hanging middle range. I'm I'm also casting mage armor. By the way. Mage I'll, armor? I'll 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 be the rear guard. I'll watch from the back. Okay. I'll be pretty close to the front by by Cress's uh, hind. Luna, Tim, Cress, and then Lycus. Okay. Press Just in case we get and Lycus, like the two of you leading. Um, go ahead, each of you roll me a survival check. 25. <coughs> 17. 17, okay. You guys head out towards the northeast, towards the northeasterly direction. Um, you are able to kind of it's not long as you kind of you're, you're walking out you know you're kind of keeping an eye out for you know tracks right uh any part of the flintlocks crew right um and in the process of this you do come across uh several pieces of debris as well from the army you know, different sections of the ship that are kind of broken and crashed as it as it kind of uh, disintegrated as it was crushed by the uh alien ship okay um Going along the way, you do actually come across several like broken trees. I mean, lots of the trees are broken, right? There's, you kind of go out into the wilds here. The humidity is intense, right? It's hot, I should say as well. Uh, extreme heat is in effect, just so you guys know. Right? Can, so I, you... can I pick up some leaves just around five or six leaves if you want? Yeah, absolutely. Not hard, right? They are everywhere as you kind of start to break the tree line. And the tree line though, is broken itself as it's kind of you know twisted and you know you can even see almost how those of you kind of are or probably just Cress who is you know more attuned to nature than the rest of you uh you can see h- how the water kind of like pushed um various parts of the jungle into large piles of debris even kind of forming these sort of like swooping kind of wave-like shapes right and as you guys are going um, you can, like I said, you can see some of the branches look like they were broken. Um, it's hard to tell between, you know, what would have been in just the general uh, shit storm that was the last wave and how much of it might have been caused by animals and stuff roaming by. But you do come across things like deep grooves in certain embankments, right? And as you guys kind of, you know, get closer, like the scent of uh, Raish the Loxodon, 
right? You can kind of get that, you get, you know, inhales, right? You can kind of get traces of it just kind of lingering. It's faint given the amount of time that has passed, right? But given the nature of the world right now and the fucked up state of the weather, things might be hanging out a little bit longer, right? Um, as you guys are kind of, you know, now following that trail, you also come across various parts of uh, debris. You see bits of rope, planks of wood, right? Um, and with your excellent checks, go both of you roll me perception checks at advantage. That's also a 25. Ooh. God damn. I rolled two 18s. Yay. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, pretty good. Uh, 18. But nothing on that. Yeah, that 25 is juicy. Okay. So, as you guys are kind of going along, right? You can... We should put on some... Some wind sound effects. Ooh. Let's do a little bit of wind. Is wind, the wind is The wind is light, you know? Um, it's not a incredibly like bustling wind or anything at the moment but there's a breeze right which helps with the heat to some extent um with your excellent survival checks it's about you guys are about maybe two hours into the journey right having left the frog grove uh when the two of you start to notice the sound of paper shredding and then you start to crest with your 25 and like it's even with your 18 you guys start to kind of hear uh, hooting, hollering, right? <laughs> Get the sense that there's some sort of animals up in front, up ahead, right? Mm-hmm. Multiple animals. You and guys are- they had mentioned a white ape, correct? They did mention a white ape. Okay. You come across the sound. Something that sounds distinctly simian. Okay. Um... Press will, will will pick up some of the sand and dust and kind of just um, let it run through their hands and cast Pass Without a Trace on the group. Everyone add plus 10 to your stealth rolls from here on out for an hour. Nice. And then um, they're going to just kind of bend down to like, I can no longer understand you because this is concentration. Um, but you can understand me. Um, I'm gonna go scope it out. Uh, question. In my wolf form, do I have any access to my key? Your key? No. Yeah. Uh, in your wolf form, you have the stats for wolf, which let me go ahead and grab that for you. I did need to grab that. So uh, I can't summon astral arms? No, unfortunately not. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was gonna give you a thumbs up. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> Before you go, Cress, Pim just puts a hand on your wrist and looks up at you and says, Wait, Cress, be careful. And give you a bardic inspiration. Aww. What is that right now? A D- D6. D6. There you go, like us. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, Cress, you're heading up? Mm hmm. Okay. Um,. We've stealthily. all heard this, correct? Or uh, the two they of you would are the inform, only. Yeah. Yeah. They would inform yeah. the group beforehand. Um, right. uh, be cautious. Keep your eye out. And they will try to get an eye on what's happening without being seen. All right, roll me that stealth check, please. <laughs> um, I'm glad I have the plus 10. It is a 19. <laughs> 19. Okay. Well. Let me get, move you guys over to the map because that's going to make descriptions easier. Okay. So, Cress. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Let's have you place yourself kind of down here in this bottom corner. Okay. All right. What was your stealth? 19. Stealth 19. Okay. Okay. I'm going to say the rest of the party is like. 60 feet back. That sound good? Okay. Sure. Okay. So basically kind of a about a turn away if we need to get to it. 
Um, Cress, with your excellent perception, still riding that, you notice that there are several monkeys in the camp, right? As you kind of look closer, you can see that they are, you know, brown fur, long tails, right? As they are kind of rummaging through. And as one of them kind of comes up, you see him kind of like flittering through a book. And as it lifts its arm, you also can see that it has feathers, like wings coming from its arms. Sick. You can see that you have possibly some monkeys with the ability to do more than just climb, right? As they are kind of rummaging through what seems to be debris, right? With your perception, you get that there are monkeys on the level above, right? You can see and hear scratching from what looks like a tub that must have fallen out of the ship, right? And you also get see that there are these creatures are currently being stalked by a pair of velociraptors. You can just see through the bush as the one is kind of like approaching the tub, right? You can just see these kind of glowing green eyes, right? The monkeys appear completely oblivious to both you and the raptors. As they are just kind of get, as you can see them kind of moving into position, you can, as you're watching the one, right? Let's say you're kind of like tucked in here, right? Because otherwise you'd just be out in the open. Um, Or you could be in this bush if you wanted to. Yeah, they'll be there. So you can, as you're kind of observing, you kind of catch, you kind of clock the one over there. You also see this one up top. You just kind of see a shadow, just a brief glimpse, but you do catch it with your excellent perception. Okay. Do we see any, do we see the sun sails or anything? They Are these the sails, do we reckon? Possibly. You can't say for sure. Can't say? Okay. Um. Let me give you 30 seconds to think about what you'd like to do. You have an action, and then I'm going to then these guys are going to move. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to... Hmm. Have I ever heard of any flying simians? Do I know about, like... Um... You know, yeah, you know, they're a very wide group. I mean, with your experience in, with animals and, you know, <laughs> being of the royal bestiary, um, it's basic knowledge for you. These, you've, you know various different, you know, family of apes, right? Um, flying ones, not totally unsurprising. Um, I'll give you one more thing, too, though, with your excellent perception check. As you are watching as these guys, these apes appear to be completely oblivious to the, the threats around them, um, the one who is kind of busy toying with the, with the book, mm-hmm. right? You seem kind of do like a quick little shake. And you just also clock on one of the pages of the book. You spy at the bottom of the page, even from this distance, the image of a coiled serpent drawn in black ink at the bottom of the page. Oh, well, fuck. Okay. He's kind of like... Um... Okay. I would like to... Um slip out this um this fine leather um bridle and I would like to go here and I need a saving throw. Okay. Of charisma seventeen. Nineteen hundred. But it's a Velociraptor. It's a minus two, so that's a 16. Oh, that is... I've been Velociraptors. Yep. They have a minus two. For so wisdom? it fails. Hmm? For wisdom? Charisma. For charisma, yes, you're correct. They do have a minus two. Yep. Yep. All right. That makes sense. All They're right. the most level of a dinosaur. Yeah. Wait, you rolled a, ni- <laughs> you rolled a 19? An 18. Yeah. Or 18. No, I rolled 19. 
You said 18 on the dice. No, he said he said 19, actually. 19. Ooh. Who is it? So what matches? is it for? Yeah, so 19 on the roll. So okay. minus two brings so it to I 17. So I still... Okay. Yeah. Who wait? Who we who meets it? Who beats it? The the one challenging. Uh, sorry, yeah. yeah, the one making the save meets it to beat it. Okay. Bummer. You yeah. oh, no. So. So what would the effect? What would the effect have been? There isn't one. Okay. Um, but you it was like a lasso, right? You'd like try to lasso it out or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you kind of take the, you kind of gear up, right? Just fling the lasso, right? As it kind of, just as you uh, move forward, right? It just happens to kind of like duck its head and the lasso just kind of lands on its shoulder and slides off. It does become aware of you. Right? I reel and it in and I turn into a velociraptor. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna go into initiative. So we'll do that on initiative now. All, All right. right. Okay, everybody go ahead, roll it up. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, do I have to uh-huh. wait for the uh, for it to start before going into combat mode? Or what do you mean? Uh, if we're going into combat, I wanted to. I would want to not be a full wolf. Is the main thing. I have to wait for my turn, right? You'd have to wait for your turn. Yeah. Sounds good. You have to wait for your turn as the the lasso kind of goes off to the side. You hear the all of a sudden the creature kind of. <laughs> kind of makes a screeching noise. All the monkeys kind of immediately pop up, right? And you guys all become aware, right? Going into initiative, let's see. Okay, Lycus, what'd you get? 18. 18, Crest, what'd you get? 17. 17, Pim, what'd you get? 19. 19, Ooh. Luna, what'd you get? 15. 15, Ednor? At 20 for 22. 22, Ooh. okay. We are fight to lose. Jesus. Right? So, Edinor, yeah. our current order is Edinor, Pim, Lycus, Cress, Luna bringing up the rear. All right, you guys get one initiative swap if you'd like to take it. Uh, I'm sure that Cress is probably going to want to go first. So, I will That's swap fine by me. Yeah. So, I just figure you might, you're, you're the one right next to me, so. So we're swapping Cress and Edinor? Yeah. Okay. I will give you my nat 20. I hope you appreciate it. <laughs> I do appreciate it. Thank you. So we got Cress. <laughs> really write these electronically. Uh, I have to go cross out some names. You guys rolled pretty well, too. Uh oh. Can you can you give me that raptor sound again, please? <laughs> <laughs> that the one? Is that a you say, baby you're saying raptor? That, that has a negative charisma. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it does. So likable. Oh, yeah, just that lucky dice roll. Alrighty. So we are going to go. Cress, you are up first with Pim on deck. Am I a Velociraptor yet? Uh, I... So your turn. Yeah, you'll turn into Velociraptor. Is that a I'm asking if that's my action in the turn or if that happened before. That'll be your action in the turn. Okay. I turn into a teal and yellow velociraptor. Oh, shit. That's awesome. Cool. The and velociraptor's then... confused. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. You gotta make the exact same sound now to see if it's on your team. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then... A bad dying pig noise. <laughs> How far away are you? <laughs> okay, I'm going to. It's perfect. I'm going to ram this guy. I need a strength save. Okay, so I will say that that it, you can see that that is like a, a ruin of a stat, a ruin of a statue, right? It's about ten feet high, right? But being a raptor, you can kind of like easily bound up its arms, right, and get onto the top level, right? And you ram it. You said. Mm-hmm. Well, it's the attack. Or save, save strength. Save and throw 11 on the roll with their minus, minus two. two. So you so fail. Nine. You're yeah, not he's prone. He's prone. Okay. And then I can make a bonus ac- attack, bonus action attack against him since he's prone. All right, but go for it. I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to try and bite him. 
15, which is, I think beats it because I know. This yeah, they're they're not low. too. Yeah, they're pretty low. We're, we are not too hard to hit. Yeah, we are pretty um, easy to hit. Seven piercing. Seven piercing. Okay. All right. It is bloodied as you kind of go down. And where do you strike it with your bite attack? As you run up there, knock it down, it flops to the floor. Great for the jugular, baby. Okay. And the jaws open up and kind of clamp down on its neck. The creature rides wildly, beating its tail against the stone beneath you. Um, and it's kicking and scrambling. You can see its claws leaving deep grooves in the rock as blood kind of begins to pool in your mouth. Okay. okay. And I have 50 feet. I'm going to, it can try and attack me with its um, opportunity. I'm going to uh, kite backwards to, I'm sure the party has their attention, but just in case, I'd like to take that opportunity attack sure. away yeah, from it. It's certainly going to go for it. And it is uh, prone, is a... so it has disadvantage, correct? Yeah. Um, I don't believe it does, but it's a two on the roll, so it ain't going to hit you. As you're able to kind of like spring backwards. It Brum, kind of the like creature has disadvantage attack on the rolls, just for future yeah. reference. Okay, good. So yeah, so, well, yeah. roll the two, but it might get a night one. It doesn't. All right, yeah. Um, so yeah, it takes a, a chomp at you. Right, as you kind of spring backwards, its jaws clamp shut, making a loud clapping noise, right? That all of you are also now very much aware of. Uh, and Cressia, yeah, you bounce back. Okay, that's my turn. Right. All righty. Pim, you are up. Okay. Pim will uh, take out her flute from her bag. Mm -hmm. In like one swift movement, she it's foldable, so she like clicks it into place and kind of holds it up and it almost starts to like play itself. There's this faint like whistling sound on the wind and she holds out her hand and says, halt. And she's gonna cast command at second level on both velociraptors. What Ooh. is the range on your command spell? It is 60 feet, sir. Okay. Oh, okay, so, so you... movement, okay, shit. Yeah, cause you're 60 so feet away. So movement first. Movement first, you'd have to double move this turn. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wait. Yeah. If she's 60 feet away, right. I'm confused. So she's, she's 60, 60 feet, feet away, away now from and she the moves end 30. of the corner of the map. So she's right. 60 feet away from here. From, to, okay. So she can get to the corner of the map there, and then it's 30 I feet guess, from there. Uh, I guess I have to use mm -hmm. my action to um, dash then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you have your bonus action still. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, I'll use my action to dash, and you already have Bardic Inspiration, so I'm not going to do that. That's it. I'll just get in a range. Okay. Set up for next round. All right, go ahead and place yourself on the map. Okay. And somewhere in these kind of like corners. All right. Ah! So, and <laughs> let's cute. see. So it Can you resize me? Oh, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. You can go ahead. I'll get in large spell eventually. And then these things and eventually sense. you'll be that size. So uh, it's the Raptor's turn. They are... So this one's going to take half its movement to get up. Right? So that is... It's moving speed of 30. So that's 15 feet there. And... Do, 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 do. He is going to... Let's see. See, given that it's already really low, it's actually going to just start to take off back this way. And jump down. It's going to make its way over here at 15 feet. It's going to just take a jump and go from that spot over there up to over there. And it's, it lands. It's going to take its action to dash into just about here next to this monkey. See if maybe he can get a monkey out of this. But he is bloodied from that first attack we cannot see the monkeys on the board yeah they they're they're very small very they're these kind guys. of like gray things oh the squid yeah they don't have like yeah they don't have like real gotcha. tokens they have roll 20 tokens mm. all righty and the other one now that it is kind of heard the call it's going to take a run up to here right because that one is at least 
Easy peasy. All right, he's going to go over there. You're going to take an attack at him. At the, the monkey who's playing with the book, who hasn't had a chance to react yet, as it's kind of now watching you, Cress, and Pim primarily, sees the other one go up. And just as it turns its head, these jaws kind of fly towards its face. And it's going to just get scooped up. They have an HP very, very low. So I'm just going to say that it goes down as it is just hanging in the jaws, right? Its little hands kind of like let go of the book. You can see it just kind of briefly kind of like kicks in the jaws, but it just the rafter just cranks down and it's got that monkey held. Um, and it is going to take the rest of its movement to start making it going back this way with the last little bit. All right, that is those guys. It is the monkeys, right? Seeing his friend die, he is going to fly up to the top of this thing. And that's his full movement. And then he's going to take a dash to scurry along to about uh, there. This guy, let's see, I'm just going to kind of move these monkeys around real quick. Let's see. <laughs> you guys hear a loud crack. <laughs> the sound of what sounds like a gun going on. Right. And you hear the scream of a raptor. <coughs> Cress, with your perception, you can guess, you, you know, you're not quite sure what happened up there, but mm. you heard a gunshot go off similar to what Hammond had used at the in the Battle of the Frog Grove. Um, and you hear the death scream of a raptor up top. Okay. Um, and then this one is also going to start, he's going to fly and start trying to get out of here. Right. This one's going to fly up here. Okay, that is all the monkeys. They've made their moves, right, as they are in the process of trying to flee, except for one unfortunate one who did get taken down by a raptor. Okay, Lycus, you're up. Uh, you said that there is a monkey still above us on that rung? Uh, there are two monkeys still up top on the second level. Um... I want to run up to them and try to communicate as a wolf to the to them. Okay. Go ahead. You'll let's see. What's your movement speed? <laughs> your movement speed as a wolf is forty, right? So you can take yep. your movement and action to get eighty feet, right? Uh, sixty feet to get to here to get in onto the map, right? I'll give you sixty feet to get up here as well. All right, um, but that leaves you with another 20 feet or so, so you can get about 20 feet in to about there. Roll 20 won't let me uh, drop a token in. That's all right. I got you. I got you. Where is the character journals? Characters, and there's Lycus tilted right there. All right, Lycus, so you get into into there. You're in wolf form. Right? Yeah, I thought, um, I thought the we're over here, though. Sorry? Oh, you want to go to that monkey? Yeah, it's the nearest one, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, you can get to about, let's see, 20 feet from just here, then. Yeah, so you can get to there. Also, someone with a gun just shot a, a creature over there. I'm not going to go as a wolf. Fair point. <laughs> Fair point. Okay. Uh, so, you come out and you start trying to speak to the monkey as a wolf. Go ahead. What do you what do you do? How does this look for us? Uh, I'm, you know that way that dogs sometimes sit up, like a little too humanly. Okay, yeah, you're going into <laughs> like a little sit pretty kind of pose. I'm gonna do that and go bark bark, and I'm trying to say, can you hear me? Can you understand me? Thing. Roll me a persuasion check at disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's actually really good. <laughs> Okay. Um, for a total of, is this its wisdom now? Or uh, no, it's charisma? still charisma. So that is a minus two. As a wolf. As a wolf. Yeah. That's right. That's fifteen then. Fifteen. All right. Um, the monkey looks terrified. You can, you know, you get the sense that even as a wolf, this monkey is in a, currently in a state of like fight or flight. Right. And as though even, you know, just seeing a wolf come up, even with your large teeth and everything, everything in its little body is telling it, get the fuck out of here. Makes sense. Right. Yeah. Okay. That was worth a try. It was. 
Edinor, you are up. Oh, I'm gonna go 30 feet. So I'm still a little bit out of the picture. Yep. But uh, then I'm gonna use Sacred Flame because that's 60 feet. Okay. And then I should be able to hit that monkey. All right, <laughs> roll me an attack roll. <laughs> Oh, I think it said deck save. Oh, deck save? Yeah. Monkeys are pretty dexterous. Let's see. What's the save? It's not going to make it. That's a, a four. Uh, oh, yeah, it was 15. Sorry, eight. I, I've, it doesn't have a minus. It has a positive, so it's good. It's oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, it did not save. Okay, what's the damage? That is going to be. I think that, that's four damage. Four damage. Okay. Ednor, how would you like to do this? <laughs> <laughs> just as it's like looking in terror upon the wolf, it's just out of nowhere a um, <laughs> a, a flame like radiance just comes from the sky and just just crisps the monkey and the monkey falls Oof. off. It's yeah, just there's like... just an explosion of feathers as you guys watch <laughs> as a radiant light just shoots down from above, <laughs> and there's just a little. <laughs> As the monkey kind of drops down in a, just a tumble of charred body and feathers, and mm. brown and gray feathers. You just hear so well lunch. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, and then, so uh, you guys hear a little bit more commotion up top, right? On the ledge above. Luna, it's your turn. I will move. This distance is a pretty big issue. I'll move my just normal movement, so I'll go up to 30 feet. Uh, let's see if I go from here. I'll go up to 30 feet, and I'm so I heard the the gunshot. That's like everyone heard this. Yeah. Everybody um, heard the gunshot. Okay, because I can't do. Today's a day where I switched out my fireball, so I don't have as much range. Oh no. <laughs> Oopsie. So I'm going to see if this works at all. I'm going to point towards, I'm going to like try and figure out the rough direction where the gunshot came from. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull out a copper wire and I'm going to try and relay a message saying, is this Cassius? You come here, Hammond sent us to get you. Okay, you're just kind of like shooting out, like trying different shots in that direction. With, That's how yeah, message like, works. Yeah. You have to be fit. Yeah. So, okay. Let's see. And what's the range on it? 120? 120 feet. So that's, that's part of being tricky. Okay. So let's take a look. See here. So you are, you use your movement to get 30 feet closer, right? Yep. Okay. So you are 30 feet away from this point, right? So let's see. 120 feet would be. Yeah, 120 feet would easily cover pretty much everything in the map. So yeah, um, with, well, minus now 30 feet, so you'd get to about where that 90 foot mark is. So 90 foot, yeah, 90 foot would easily kind of get most of the stuff up there. Um, you start shooting out, yeah, you start shooting out messages in that direction, right? Um, let me take a look, see. That's something, the, what does the rules of message say? Let me just read the spell real quick. Towards a creature within range. Okay, I can hear the message and can reply in a whisper that only you can hear. Uh, you can cast a spell through solid objects. And the spell doesn't follow a straight line. Okay. But it doesn't, yeah, it just says creature. Okay. Roll me, roll me a d4. That is a two. A two? Okay. Uh, you kind of point in the direction, shoot out your message, right? You get purchase. Like, you know that you connect with a creature, right? A couple of things. As you connect, you start to hear those same kind of whispering, psychic things kind of joining in on the connection as well. Um, whatever creature that you did connect with, though, doesn't respond. Uh, you know that there's something there, but it it's 
it doesn't appear to have the ability to respond to you. Okay. Is, even though you did connect. Okay. Uh, okay. That's, I think that's about it that I can really do. Righty. Then, top of the order, you guys get a quick round to strategize if you want to. Let's get a minute. Any planning you want to do going into this next round? Do we want to vocalize to whoever shot that we've come to help them? I think so. Yeah. Yes. I can. I... <laughs> that was my, that was going to be my attempt, but we missed it. Uh, do we want to keep yeah. one of the monkeys alive and see if we can animal speak to it to know about where its uh, big white friend is? Sure. I was going to bait it in with burnt monkeys, but that's fine. We can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> The raptors kill. Okay. One raptor dead. There's one left. It's trying to escape with its monkey. That, that we're aware of. Yeah. Yeah. Do right. we do we care about that? Do we want to kill it? <clears throat> the raptor. Kill the raptor. Yeah. Raptors are scary. Okay. All right, guys. That's five seconds left, but it sounds like we got a plan. So let's hop on in. All right. Press. You are up. Starting us off. Him on deck. All right, uh, move. Where do I move there? Da, 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 da. Um, and I'll say that I'll hold my attack for anything that approaches. Okay. Okay. Any bonus action or anything? No. Well, no, I guess rafters don't have much. Okay, then Pim, you are up. Okay, I will um, do that super cool thing that I said I was going to do last mm -hmm. round. Yep. So uh, Here hold goes up the, the flute. flute. But this time, I, yep, I can reach it. I uh, just command this guy. Sorry, uh, this guy. I say, approach. <laughs> Thereby okay. triggering caresses. <clears throat> All right. So does he do it on his turn or does he use his reaction to do it now? I can't remember. I can look at the spell it too. is. It, it's on his turn. He spends an action to do it. And what's the save again? There's a save, right? The wisdom, 15. 16 on the roll. Sorry. OK. That's fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, Any movement so... or? So, yeah, I guess. I guess that's all. Okay. Yeah, you come, you step forward, you call forward your flute. It goes into the air. The sound comes out. And as you kind of call out in your most commanding tone, approach the creature like briefly the sound kind of hits it you see it shake its head causing little bits of like feathers and blood to kind of splatter on the sand beneath it but it appears unaffected and it kind of scratches and it prepares to kind of continue taking off right and then on its turn it will go ahead and it's going to use its turn to run yeah it's 40 80 so it'll get right under there He's gonna start taking off with his with his monkey prize. Pretty pleased with itself. It's making its way out of here with that monkey in its jaws. Too bad Jerry okay. didn't make it. Yeah, unfortunate. All right, that's you. Uh, there is a little bit more commotion up top, just outside the range where you guys can kind of see. Okay, Lycus, you're up. Ednor on deck. Okay. Um... I think seeing kind of what's happened, I'm um, ignoring the, the Velociraptor at this point. I think I want to stealth uh, closer to the ship or to, to wherever the gunshot came from and see if okay. I can uh, scope out who or what is around. Sure. I will say you can, let me just kind of take a look, see here. Yeah, you can kind of cut through the bushes there. It'd be difficult terrain, so it'll move, it'll slow you down for those uh, 20 feet, so 
you know, depending on where you enter in, right? It's going to cost double movement at certain points. You can take like 20 there and then 20 there. So you can get to about, so you can get to about this square with your movement. Okay. And uh, down a couple. Down a couple. Mm -hmm. we'll yeah, because your movement's cut in half in difficult terrain as you go into that. You're kind of like now going through the underbrush and where kind of the um, the debris is kind of piled up, right? Even it's also a little bit of a slope. Uh, so can I try to perceive, see if I can either sniff out or hear any uh, where where these people might be coming from? Okay. Yeah, you do hear um, monkeys screeching, and you hear the snapping of long, threatening jaws around the corner, kind of up on some up in that area of the campsite. Right. Okay. Um, Roll me a perception check. You do have advantage as a wolf for um, hearing and smell. <laughs> so with your oh. passive wolf perception, you smell blood. <laughs> Stuff you only know when you punch in a druid. And crispy, crispy critter. And you, <laughs> yeah, you smell burn back. So, uh, David, I have a question. How do sure. How do skills work? as a wolf do i use my skill you'd use uh the the stat block that i gave you so perception stat? you have a plus three to perception as a wolf okay uh, okay i see god i'm i'm bad at this game that i play so you're often. fine uh <laughs> 17. 17 with the 17 yeah you can tell that there's kind of something going on there um with your 17 you see you catch glimpses of a shadow a large shadow Right, and whatever is in there, it sounds like there's chaos, but as you're kind of listening, you can hear the sounds of possibly multiple monkeys, but you're not necessarily sure that there is, how many raptors or anything out there, or it might be up there, could be as many as two or three, but you do hear that there's a lot of fighting going on, and you just kind of catch a glimpse of what looks to be like a long black tentacle, right, that kind of ends in kind of a bulbous head with spikes at the bottom. Hmm. As it kind of like whips up and kind of comes back. You said tentacle. Does it look organic? The tentacle? Yeah. Yeah, it looks organic-ish. I mean, yeah, it looks like a... It doesn't look like a squid tentacle or anything. Like mechanical. Okay, but yeah. So, um, any bonus... Well, you're a wolf. I don't think you have... You got that. You could... I I will still give you your... Actually, if you want to take the another... Like your... So that was just your movement, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in, in that case, I'm going to go hybrid. I'm going to take this time to, in the brush, turn into a half wolf. Okay. Yeah, we see a wolf go into one side, and then out emerges the werewolf form on the other side. Okay. Great. Where did you hear this coming from? Down here. Can you see the ping? You again. In the like the kind of the middle-ish of the campsite. Oh. I wasn't seeing the ping. But... Me neither. You guys aren't seeing the ping? There it is. Yeah, there okay, it is. That was me. Oh, that was like so oh, I'm on GM layer still, sorry. That's my that's why. You guys only see the pings if it's on objects and tokens. Mm. Like is close. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Lycus is really close. Um okay. Let's see. Edinor, you're up. Alright. I guess I'm gonna spend the 30, first 30 feet moving. Okay, you're on the map. And then uh, I should probably bring myself on the map. Just resize my beautiful face. Cora, <laughs> All right, there you are. Um, I was thinking like doing a running jump to try and like get up to the top of this. So it was 10 feet. Um, the arms are like 10 feet, and then the next set is like another like five-ish feet. Okay. So if I do like a running jump and get on top. Of yeah, you can get it onto there. You're at, with your base athletics, that's not hard for you. I'm a pretty tall boy too. You're a pretty I, strong tall boy. So yeah, you can easily make that without much of a check. I just want to, I don't have to stand up on the shoulders. Just stand mm -hmm. up. Okay. Majestically. Okay. Uh, roll me a perception check from up there. I don't see shit. 
Um, and you don't see shit. Uh, perception. I'll just tell your you. beautiful hair just covers uh, your eyes. Yeah, your hair, hair just, just kind like of whips in the wind, the right? There's leaves, right? <laughs> you get distracted by the sound of like a wolf snarling, and then suddenly the steps of like the heavy steps of a humanoid. I, I know I should have cut the bangs out. Oh, <laughs> should have done the bangs. Bye. Five, yeah. So yeah. I got five total. <laughs> That's all right. That okay. sounds like my day. <laughs> you hear um, more the <coughs> Lycus and Ednor, the two of you, and Cress. Uh, you guys all start, you guys continue to hear some sort of battle kind of happening up there. All right. And Luna, you are up. Where along, we're along here, because I'll spend another 30 feet of movement, but where along here? I'll give you uh, any. Awesome. I'll give you any one of these outer blocks. From here, here? to about like two blocks next to Pim. So, um, okay. Here, I gotta really get you guys tokens back on. But I keep thinking Luna's token's gonna change soon. <laughs> With Ednor's token, it just looks like this statue has a really pretty face. Now it does. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'll use I'll use my uh, bonus action, my Ziggy hook, and I'm going mm -hmm. to shoot it and attach to the pole here. Okay. Yeah, it's just I'm a long of piece it. of pole. And then, yeah, you can kind of... I don't Although, think there's any sort of check there, right? I would say, does this pole look... Or is it a mask? It's a it's a it's a different series of things, you know. It's it's hard to tell. It was part of something that came off of the ship. So I'll I'll just keep going. I'll use that to go. That's about thirty feet range there. Sure. Yeah, you can get up there with your ziggy hook. And right. you, Luna, you get decent line of sight there. As you can see now, there is another raptor, larger heavier looking than the others. It's got a series of orange streaks along the along its jaw, kind of going backwards. Um, orange crests kind of up along the back of its neck. And coming from beneath its jaws, you see two kind of, you know, scaly fins, but you also see two long black tentacles. They kind of go up and at the ends of them, you see they've got these kind of like club-like shapes with spikes coming out of the bottom half of them. As this raptor is, um, it's got, uh, a monkey in wrapped up in one of those tentacles uh, that is whipping around and that monkey is pretty dead. <laughs> and the other monkey is like cornered, terrified, and this one is trying to make its way out of here because it would have moved up here. Um, roll me a perception check real quick, Luna, as you're, as you're there. Put it like right up here on the shoulder of this thing. Yeah, not that great. I think probably seven. Seven? The seven, it's not great, but I will give you this. Okay. The one monkey that's trying to escape, right? There's a glimmer that catches your eye, a sparkle, like something metallic. You can't tell what that monkey might have, right? But this monkey, as it's kind of trying to get out of here, you can see that it seems to have something in its possession. That's about it. Something shiny. Why do you make this choice for me? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'll have to go for that. Also, as I'm as I'm on the pole, I'll turn around and as loud of a voice I can, but not not shouting level, but just like just speaking just below there. I'll warn the crew what's what's up ahead. Oh, there's a much bigger one up here. And I'll turn around and I will fire off a. a if you were trying to do that stealthily, you do have a plus 10 currently. Mm, true. Yeah, what is your stealth? Yeah, go ahead and roll that to stealthily call out to the crew. That'll be 26. Okay. Don't worry, you're fine. It, it did not roll well. <laughs> it's, it's pretty obsessed with the monkey that it's got cornered. Um, I, yeah, I'll, I'll 
That's about the decision I was going to do. I'm going to do a, a Ray of Frost at it. At the creature? Okay. Rich, you need a saving throw for me? No, I need to roll. Oh. Uh, 26 to hit. Oh, that'll hit. Don't worry. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, let me just see. Is that in a that's a spell attack roll? Yeah, it was a cantrip. Okay, roll that at disadvantage for me, please. Then it turns into a ten. Okay, uh, so the ten is what you'll be using, right? Give me the flavor of your ray of frost. It's sort of like sub zero when you see the frost particles sort of twirling and submerging into a little, uh, not a little bit, like a sizable uh, icicle, mm -hmm. stalagmite, is that the right word? Yeah. And sure. it just fires off from my hand towards it. Okay. Yeah, the spike, the icicle spike just flying through the air as it forms outside your palm and it shoots forward. And it looks like it was going to be a pretty solid hit. You were quite sure that you were dead on the mark. And just as the icicle is about to hit, it seems that the creature isn't actually where you thought it was. Whoa. As you fire past it, right? You can tell you it, it goes through, and you can tell now that the creature wasn't there at all. Perhaps it was some kind of strange illusion that made you think it was there. Dinosaurs cast an illusion. Holy shit! So it just goes right through it, or you see where it actually is. Um, I, as, I, I assume it just goes right through it. I don't know what. Yeah, the it goes. It goes makes. right through it. It goes right okay. through. Okay. 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 Um, I'll pretty much end my turn there with my eyes peeled. To where okay. Who would have cast it? All right. Top of the order. You guys get a minute. You guys can go ahead and do any kind of strategizing that you'd like. Do you guys know if uh, oh, uh, affect smell? Um. If what depend affects smell? on the illusion. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, I imagine this is similar to displacement. Yeah, I think it's displacer thing. Um, I can get into range this round and command it. But we don't have a. We don't know what it is. It. <laughs> nope, yeah, we don't. That's how we dealt with displacer beasts in the last game. But it's probably something we need to kill. Yes. <clears throat> Unless it has a mirror image or something. So mine doesn't, I, I mean, it needs to be something I can see, but I can <coughs> command it to halt and it won't have any actions. David, would we know about something like major image? Would anyone? Like the spell? One? Yeah. Yeah, I would say, you know, there are casters amongst you who would definitely know about that kind of stuff. Um, illusionary magic like that to cause sort of images and stuff. That's pretty common knowledge for sure. Would Luna having interacted with it be able to suss out that as a potentiality yeah i would say this it it looks it looks like an illusion it, when you shot it it went straight Wait, through on. and then you saw the creature kind of like shift again as it's kind of in the throes of combat and you kind of like you it's the moment where you're just kind of taken aback like you could have sworn that it was there just a moment it, ago it's a displacer yeah. thing i think all righty so that is your minute. Cress, you are at the top of the order. All right. And the book off. is like 10 feet away. The one that I saw with the Cabal of the Slumbering Serpent symbol. Yes. All right. Uh, go there because I have opposable thumbs. I pick it up. Okay. <laughs> and then I use the rest of my movement, which is 30 feet from there. Nope, there. Uh, eh, eh, duh to run back here. I imagine interacting with an object was my action. Yeah. Um, so I am- Well, picking, no, picking up the book is a free action. Like that's- I'm a free not action? Gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna make you roll for, to pick stuff up. Oh, yeah. thank you. Then I will continue you still have dashing. Your action. Yeah, I will, it will be a dash, um, which okay. I know it's- um, Difficult terrain-ish. Difficult yeah. terrain, so I'll end there. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Uh, Pim, you're up. Okay. So um, I will move up this way and then difficult terrain starts. So I think I can make it right about there. 
I'll go here. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Are you frozen? You're moving and everything on our side still. Okay, sorry, my audio just cut out for a second, but we're good. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do, can I see the thing? Make it all no. that noise. From your angle, no, with the with all the debris and the statue and shit, everything in the way, you unfortunately can't see it, I'm sorry. Okay. But you can certainly hear it. And with Luna kind of having called it out, right? You're, you've got a decent idea of its location, if that helps. Okay, okay, that does help. In that case, I will, um, I'll take my hands, I'll cut my hands over my mouth and whisper something. And then, I, and then I chuck it like a baseball <laughs> towards the source of the noise. And it's dissonant okay. whispers, so I need a yeah. wisdom save, please. 15 and is the DC. The spell specifies that all you have to do is be able to hear it, so yeah. Hear, yeah. Well, what was the wisdom save at 15? Yeah, 15? it's gonna be a failure. Great. Mm -hmm. 3d6 psychic damage, which will be, oh, nice, 13. Okay. 13 psychic damage, and then it has to move, take, use its action, or no, it has to immediately use its reaction to move as far as its speed allows away from me. Okay. Would it take half damage on this throw if it succeeds for Dissonant Whispers? I believe it um, takes half. It, on a successful save, takes half and doesn't have to move. Well, but it, it failed, failed right? So it it, it okay. failed, so it doesn't really matter anyway. Okay, I was just checking something. Okay. Um, all right, so you said it's going to take its movement to get away? Yep, its reaction is, is going to be used. And it takes okay. its movement to move as far as its speed allows away from us, basically. Okay. All right. So you guys, Luna, you watch as this large ass fucking raptor just leaps into the air. 20 feet, easy peasy, lands up on the, like an overturn, uh, um, uh, column uh -oh. that is kind of stretching across, you know, kind of between the trees and the cliff. Right, it just jumps 20 feet straight into the air without a run, lands on that, and then it's gonna take another 20 feet to move. Uh, let's see, up here. Okay. Okay, so yeah, it moved away And I will use my bonus action to say, nice try, Luna, better luck next time. And that's bark <laughs> inspiration for you. <laughs> All right. And as it jumps up there, like, Edinor, you catch a glimpse of it uh, as it kind of like leaps through the air. You just kind of see this large shadow and then all of a sudden this black rafter just floating through the air and <laughs> you hear it in the distance. Okay. All right, Pim, so that is you. Let's see. Rafter is off the map as it has escaped. Uh, this monkey is going to take off. <laughs> this way with its full movement speed. The other one is going to also kind of continue taking off this way. Okay. Lycus, you're up. Okay, okay. So I want to just Ed move into the, into the brush over here, uh, still stealthed out. Uh, I also want to reach into my bag, you know, because I'm assuming I was carrying my backpack as a little dog, little dog backpack. It's extremely stretched out on my huge <laughs> werewolf on your, shoulders. Yeah, yeah, it goes from kind of being like too loose to being too tight instantaneously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just to get my coat on, you know, just in case we meet anyone. I want to make sure they know. <laughs> they know, yeah, they know I got you. Was. You got a rep. Random flashes roll me a, wandering around the woods. <laughs> yeah, roll a perception check, all of you, real quick. Oh. God. I rolled 22. another three, so I got a five Sorry, again. Ednor. Yeah, you got sand in your eye, my friend. I'm sorry. Just the hair just won't get out. It won't get out. Bad. Nine. Nine. I rolled one good roll, and I gave it to Crest this day. <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Bad roll. Um, uh, uh, 
What'd you get? How much? Lycus? 14. 14? And uh, Luna? I'm 22. 22? Okay. The two of you kind of clock that as the monkeys are kind of now like running away, right? There is a calm kind of settling over the campsite, right? You you get the sense that that creature as it's in the process of trying to escape, right? And you can see it's got a monkey kind of wrapped up in one of its uh, its tentacles, right? Um, even though it was scared, right? Taking that movement, it doesn't seem to have too much interest in turning back. Right. Okay. Um, Just so okay, so I still, I still want to spend my turn to move into the brush over here mm -hmm. uh, and see if I can get a, if there's any chance I could see, like, like there's still a gunshot. I want to see if the, if I, if there's any mm. uh, sight of that. With your with your perception from earlier, right? You do catch a glimpse of uh, a musket on the floor, kind of over in the this is my right layer. Okay, yeah, kind of in the area where that other monkey was originally. Oh, God damn it! It was a monkey. A monkey with a gun. Anything We're else? Evolving. Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Uh, All right. Edner, you're up. All right. Just because, yeah. So, am I higher up than Luna or is Luna higher up than me? Luna's just slightly higher up than you. Okay. So, I want to get higher up, but I want to essentially move over here, but I also want to then stealth. I want to kind of gauge out the area if I eventually can see. Yeah, I'll say you get up there and you know you're close enough now. You got a better angle. The trees aren't quite in your way. You can see the campsite as, as it's laid out on the map there. Perfect. Now I'm going to stealth. So, oh, oh, sweet. I don't roll a disadvantage because the armor. But then I get a plus ten. So that is. Get ten, two plus ten. Yep. Twenty-seven. Okay. I'm yeah. super stealthy. You're very stealthy. Sneaky. Sneaky, so sneakerson. <laughs> I'm like, right. yes, no one can see me now. Anything else, Edinor? Um, I think I'm going to just kind of stay in that position. I kind of want to see what happens with this giant behemoth wandering around over there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Edinor, Lycus, Luna, right? And then Crest with your passive perception. You, you can't see, but you can hear as uh, the heavy footfalls of the creature kind of runs away in pursuit of the other monkey that kind of <laughs> Sorry. Right? Um, and it's going to just pursue the monkey off the map. So the creatures, the enemies are off the map. The creature seems to have gotten what it came for, uh, a meal. <coughs> the monkeys are scattered, but you guys now have the campsite, or the, sorry, the salvage um, here to yourselves as you are uh, you're the battle music <laughs> uh, but it seems like there are no more enemies on the field I'm gonna uh, run straight over here to this tub and look inside of it okay in the tub yeah all right uh, in the tub you find um, uh scattered pages right um broken glassware right you see the tub itself it held up in the crash pretty all right but there is kind of a crack in it right um you see some monkey fur and feathers i'll take some feathers all right take those feathers you get wow eight feathers great eight monkey feathers uh, Lycus is gonna stand up out of his like hidden, you know, in in, in the bush. Just like, wow. Well, that was a little anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> Just a touch, but we have cooked monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's gonna be delicious. It's just uh, here from like you don't even know necessarily where. I'm still stealth. <laughs> Wait, some I think you guys are all kind of aware of each other to some extent. <laughs> Silence. Right? Um, there is the body of the raptor there. Uh, you see that it was it 
uh, roll uh, medicine checks or survival. Anybody who are proficient in those skills. I'll do survival. You go for it. She'll be 19. Yeah, I got 19. freaking 10. Can't roll for shit today. <laughs> 19. Uh, you can see there is, this is the one that you had attacked earlier, Cress. Right, you can see the wounds in its neck cause you know a significant part of the damage, but it does look like there is a bullet wound in its in its rib cage, um, and it looks like that's you can tell that that's kind of what killed it there. Okay, um, they're gonna turn back into a elf and um, just kind of murmur to everyone in the area. We should check for survivors, but I'm not very optimistic. Um, can I pick up that musket? You said it was over certainly, here. You certainly can. I pick up a musket. You have mm-hmm. a musket. I have a musket. Um, go ahead. Um, you. What did you roll just now for the thing? Did I have survival what, what nineteen? Survival nineteen. Okay. All right. That's fine. Uh, as you guys are exploring the campsite, yeah. let's go ahead. Let's get some perception checks as you guys are looking around through yeah, the campsite. I want to search around. You want a separate check? Uh, yeah, perception or investigation, your, your choices. Ew. I would like investigation. Um, got an 18 for me. Perception. Agreed. 15. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, Cress, first off, um, you did secure the journal, right? Or the, the yeah. piece of paper, okay? So you can see it's mostly shredded pages, right? But you do have one page which does have legible texts, all right? So you can see that it is torn. There are obviously sections of this thing that are missing. But the text that you find has the following. And this is the one that is marked with the uh, the symbol of the coil circle at the bottom of the page. Yep. Yeah. I don't think there's any spelling errors in there. So there you go. That's hey, what you get there. check this it, to see the statue to see if there's some relevance to it. If I recognize it, I don't know if it's like a religious or a history check. Yeah, history. That is a 24. Okay, with a 24, right? Um, it's clear that these, these, sti- these statues are people right they're humanoids but they are much larger than your average humanoid obviously right these these are huge statues right um the stonework is expert it's very well carved right and even just kind of looking it over you know in your background you know you you're primarily an art student but you did dabble here and there in history, right? And you do you recall a few things, being having the excellent memory that you do. Um, and you can tell that these are old. These are very old. And you can see that there are sections of it which are you know, still kind of encased in dirt. These were possibly statues that were once buried before the flood. And they've recently seems to have kind of become unearthed, right? And, and looking around now at the statues, you also see that there are more statues, not just these two that are on the map, but you can also see other remnants of other pieces, you know, kind of heading further up the hill. Statues that have been unearthed. Mm-hmm. Because of the water going away. As you kind of look around, you can see that there's, you know, occasionally what look to be kind of like runic symbols on the side. They look vaguely dwarvish right but not quite and you you i'm pretty sure you don't know this let me just double check you do speak dwarvish you do speak dwar- or you do speak and read dwarvish so you can see that these are vaguely dwarvish but it's 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 wrong it, it the it looks like it, it just it looks different right the letters are the, the shapes are analogous but not quite the same so you wouldn't like you couldn't make any sort of guess as to what it said well, I'm definitely relaying that to the group as well. So yeah, I, I guess just for purpose's sake, I'll move there. And I'll mention oh. um, 
these statues, uh, they seem to be visible now due to the tidal wave event that occurred. Unearthed, if you will. Hmm. I imagine there's a lot that came out uh, after that. Maybe even some places for our missing crew members to, <coughs> to hide. There's a cave or entrance to, I want to say, I don't know why I want to say temple, perhaps. It could be an indicator to some sort of safety or rest area. I'm going to start. Yes. No, just listening to Luna, can they start ritually casting Detect Magic? What's the range on it? It'll be 10 minutes, uh, but the range will be 30 feet from themselves for 10 minutes once it's cast. Also with an 18, do I spot anything while I'm rummaging around? Uh, yeah. Uh, you find 10 bullets. Right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to send you the list of shit that you find here. Okay. Um, Pim is looking. If you look at the map, I'm going to ping in a few places. Uh, one sec. Let me let me send this oh. to Max real quick. And we'll say as far as like. salvage and stuff pim i will say you're are you like just looking to kind of salvage stuff from in around the camp, the site yep just looking at this like middle level here this 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 okay then i will go and the, probably ahead. the paper in the tub in case there's anything on that okay it doesn't seem to be anything of real importance i'll grab the paper for luna anyway sure that's nice <laughs> Now, should we discuss our next move? Um, yeah, Pim's yeah. going to go up here on this pole and try to gracefully go up to meet the others. Um, while everyone was looking, I, I also rolled uh, to search for stuff. I rolled a 90 perception, and I was hoping I could look for two things specifically. Sure. What are you looking for? Uh, one, I want to see if there's any uh, evidence of, because it smelled like the elephant man around here, right? Uh, vaguely, you know, you're just kind of like tracking like some scent to, to kind of send, just kind of like moving forward. I was just hoping to see if there was any evidence that he what that that they were here specifically, uh, and not just you know, whatever. Uh, maybe <clears throat> maybe that will give us more evidence in what direction they went from here. Sure. Uh, and other than that, I was hoping to look while I'm looking for the other stuff for any gems or fancy rocks. Or just okay. pretty rocks. Sure. Let's see. Um, I think amongst the things that I gave... Let's see. I think there were a couple of actually like pretty rock things that Edinor and Pim have kind of come across as well. Um, but you're able to find like just, you know, general rocks as well. Um, you know, nothing, you know, uh, check with your friends. They, they have come, they've also been kind of looking around. Right, they might have some stuff that you can, uh, that might be looking, might be more in line with what you're looking for. Um, and you said your perception was to kind of track as well. Yeah, I was hoping to find evidence that they were here, so that maybe that evidence could show in what direction they went. Sure. Okay. Um, it's pretty hard to kind of pick apart the evidence of you know any sort of like specific creature moving through here. You see that this camp is kind of one. It's not much of a camp, sorry. Uh, one, a lot of the stuff is just kind of... A lot of stuff is just kind of, you know, uh, littered around the place, right? Uh, things that just fell from the sky, you know, broken trees. Um, a lot of it's also just kind of like fucked up with just the general weather. Um, and a lot of creatures have kind of been roaming through here, right? Um, what was your... What was the check again? What was the number? 19. 19. Uh, let's see, with a 19, right? 
you don't find any evidence necessarily of Raish or Cassius kind of having passed through here, right? Um, but it does look like some of these chests and stuff that you've come across look like equipment that you had seen earlier on the honor back when back when you were on that vessel. Okay. Yes, I, so, I think we're close. I, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. So we, with our tracking checks from earlier, did not catch any sort of scent of them. We have like no direction. So you kind of, yeah, you kind of followed, you know, some of the scents and then some of the debris up to this point, right? But the trail does go pretty cold here because it's been so busy in this area, right? And it's been three days that have elapsed. Pin's going to mosey over here and peek underneath this area. Okay, let's not get too obsessed with the map. I, I, yeah, I think we've investigated. Everyone has done yeah. their perception. In the, that's what I'm we assuming. Can, we can just poke around everything on the map. What do you guys have in terms of information? Should we take a break and then you guys kind of think about it and then we come back? Sure. That'd be right. good. Yeah, I can, Sounds I good. I gotta take the dog out. So. Sounds good. All right, let's do that. All right, I will be right back. All right, so you guys uh, kind of looted the salvage, right? Ednor and Pim, you guys have come across several stuff. Um, what are we doing? What's the um, plan? First things first, uh, I guess, how far has uh, the ritual gone? It's been about 10 minutes. Let's yeah, say. 10 minutes, easy peasy, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so you'll have up, your detect magic going on. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to walk up to. Crass, I just have like essentially yeah, what I found. Crass, would you be able to help me identify what if this is magic? Sure thing. Then, is um, it? No, is none of the that was, none, none of that none of that stuff in that you found is magic. It's just bits of salvage that you were able to kind of procure from the site. Nothing in the area. Not whatever this is. Not the statues. Nope, statues are not magical. Uh, Things not magical. Um, only the possessions in your party. Okay. All right. And so these are not the sun sails then? No. They appear to be made of, you know, uh, canvas, but they are completely shredded, but um, no magical sort of essence on them. Right. So this is dead. All right. You're, yeah. You've told us to stop, like, exploring the area. That we've already done our checks, correct? Yeah. As far as checks go, we've got everybody's gotten pretty solid checks. So and I'm just gonna announce to the party and just say, so I did find a couple of items. Um, this uh, I'm, I'll probably keep a couple of them for the girls, but uh, I, if anybody needs a vial of lead and ink, I don't know if that would be of any use. Very, what type of ink? Uh, leaden. I would assume lead based. Don't lick it. Yeah. Like this. Let's try not to lick it this time. Um, oh, I have something that'll go with that. And I hold the paper. Yeah. Luna, I thought maybe you'd like this. Thank you very much. So go good with my. Ink. I'll take a look at it. I. All right. Huh? What was that? Pack it with me. Okay. Got it. Uh, I do have a vial of jade dust as well. I don't know if that's of any use in any spells or anything. Mm. Not currently for me, but oh, whatever just... comes up, I'll go to you. Yeah, hold on to that. Um, yeah, so I'll just I'll put the rest in my pockets. Since this is not of magical nature. So, All right. d does anybody feel like maybe that? That big raptory thing with tentacles kind of reminds you of the way that it changes creatures. I quick question. I thought we didn't see it. I thought uh, the only ones who saw it were Luna and Ednor. Yeah, Luna and Ednor. Yeah, that's Ednor true. Really didn't see I that. They just saw a big blue blob go up yeah. there. So no, what you was saw that jump. thing anyway? You saw, it, Ednor, you saw it like jump onto the thing. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, Amended the statement. I looked at it, I was freaking blind. So. Yeah. Yeah. You're... All right. So, did anybody see the thing? Not really what I saw. So then, yes, as <laughs> you go to your question. What was it? it? Looked like one of those, like a bigger raptor with tentacle hands, similar to the creature that we fought just earlier yesterday. Hmm. Hmm. And we didn't see it dump any other creatures. I mean. Uh, killed a monkey, grabbed the monkey, and took off. And also, well, it was also feared by Luna, uh, by Pim. Is is it possible that some of the uh, natural wildlife are being mutated? I don't know, as a side effect? That does seem possible. Yeah. Maybe even I just think eating. that's likely. Yeah. The question is, how? Well, I mean, they might be eating the flesh of whatever's dying. Who knows what's in there? Could be. As if they're eating scum. scum. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's for later. Well, I guess we should keep looking, huh? All right. Agreed. Keep tracking so, along. Here's the thing, guys. Uh, I lost the scent. I, I know that the. Uh, Hold on, are you still naked? (laughs) No, he's in his werewolf form, so he's wearing his coat, and it's just fur. It's uh, PG-13, technically, but he is mostly naked. Uh, (laughs) So, uh, I lost the scent, but he was here. And I think, at this point, we could just use more traditional surveying methods. Uh, If we split up in teams of two, uh, 45 degree angles out, a few hundred meters. Uh, Ednor, with your flight ability, if you go forward uh, a similar distance, try and keep everyone within shouting distance, we might be able to slowly radiate out until we find evidence of anything. And then- I'm against this, because if we find them and things are bad, then it's gonna take someone enough time for things to go south to get back together. Why wouldn't we just keep doing this as a unit? Well, we don't know what direction they went in. It would take us who knows how long. We do know they went relatively north from here, right? Northeast, was it? North, northeast. If we just keep heading in that direction, maybe we'll find more wreckage with more clues. I suppose at that point it's just uh, it's got to be about luck, I guess. I could fly up and just see if there's any wreckage nearby. I can only do it once a day, though. Keep that in mind. So, but I could fly out, see if I see anything, then come back down. That might be helpful. Can you take a passenger? Um, depends on the weight of that passenger. I can carry one person, I believe. I'm pretty small. You are quite small, so I didn't carry it. You've got a really good eye, Cress, so that's a great idea. Yeah, so say we do that, rather than split everyone up and potentially die horribly. (laughs) (laughs) We wouldn't die. We're telling you. Maybe you wouldn't. Horribly. You fall off a a very far distance. (laughs) Most would not have survived that. (laughs) Okay, so. Yes. Ednor, you're flying up with Cress? Yep. I'm going to pop okay. my, uh, my special Vila tie. Do it up. I'm taking a leaf that I've got and I'm going to have it in my hand. I'm going to leave my hand and cast Origami on it. Okay. A flower. <laughs> okay. Aww. Is that a cantrip? Yeah. That's it'll so cute. Ta- it will tell me what time of day it is, too. <laughs> a flower? Wait, that's a real thing. Love it. Okay. Do you want to know what time of day it is? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. About, it'd be about one o'clock in the afternoon. No. Okay. Cress and Edenor. Edenor, roll me a strength check. Mm-hmm. Pretty low DC, given Cress is not a big person. Right, so- 
12. Makes it. And I'm, obviously, Cress is not resisting either, so that helps. No. All right. Cress, uh, your thing, it lasts for how long now? My detect magic? 10 minutes. No, no, no. Um, the wings. My Edinor's wings? Wing. I don't Edinor's know. Wings. Wings. Edinor. Edinor's wings. How My long do they last? It's a minute. A minute? Okay, so you guys get a minute, assuming you're going to go up like. Mm-hmm. How, how high are you going up? Well, I'm going to kind of go. Assuming kinda you're double moving the whole up. way. Yeah, double moving, so I got 30 feet flying speed. So. Okay. I'd say we go up for the first. Well, probably at least 120 feet. 120 feet ish. Okay. If you're sure. dashing, then yeah, you, you can do dash more than that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you could double you can also to like, like move. Or you want to move laterally too yeah. once you get up there. Well, first of all, I get up and then see if we want to see it. Okay. See if we see anything, get a little bit closer, then come back up. All right. Sure. Cress, uh, go ahead. Roll perception and advantage. Ooh. Your vantage point. That's good. One of those is a one. Um, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's fine though. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, 21. 21. Okay. With a 21. So, you spy several things. Thing number one. Further to the north, you can see where the river, uh, the Korluat, used to run. Right? You can see where it it kind of. The Korluat. K O R L U A T. Right? Um, And you. You've been upon this river before, right? Like you've explored this area. You can see kind of, and you know that it runs north south, right? So you can kind of see kind of towards the northern direction where it would kind of continue up, right? Um, it is completely dry and there are deep canyon trenches, right? Um, as you get higher up, you can see again the similar signs of destruction and shit as, you, as you're getting higher and higher. Uh, but you can see where there seems to be kind of a, a more clear trail where going almost like directly north um, along the embankment, you can see that something large has plowed through this area. Off towards the northeast, as with the height that you guys are at, you also see what seems to be a large, almost like a split in the mountain, right? It, it, there's, uh, you guys are kind of closer now to the eastern bank of the river. And you can see where it kind of goes up into the the foothills of the mountain range. You can see what looks to be like a large cavernous split kind of into the mountain. And that's fairly close to you guys as well. I would say, you know, 10, uh, 10, 15 minute walk, right? You guys can get up there. Um, And with your excellent check, you can also see like humanoid shapes kind of along the path there, right? You can see more of those same statues kind of littering the landscape heading towards that crevice and then with the height that you guys have as well towards a more southeasterly direction you catch a bright metallic glimmer and you can also see what looks to be something large and white flapping in the wind and this is this is a while. This is a ways off. Also, with your check, you can also tell that the sky is going from kind of that bright blue to a bit more greenish yellow. Just off towards east, uh, towards the west. The sky like towards the west. The west. Yeah, towards the west, kind of back towards the frog grove a bit, but not not necessarily like emanating from the frog grove, just off in the distance. The sky's got a bit of a greenish yellowish kind of tint to it. Like right on the horizon, you mean? Yeah, like along the horizon. Okay. And would we would I be able to intuit anything regarding like atmospheric changes or something? Roll me a nature check. Fourteen. Fourteen. A couple things. The wind that was, it's kind of been ever present, does seem to be slowing down, right? It, it's not nearly as, as hard as, as, as kind of, you know, blustery as it was before, right? Um, it does seem to be kind of subsiding. 
Um, yeah. As far as atmospheric changes, you know, mm, with your check, you can tell that there's some kind of system or something kind of forming, but you're not, I, you know, as to, you know, further details in that, whether it's going to be like a really bad storm or something, you can't quite tell with that check. Okay. And is, do the Kiguana live to the west? The Kiguana live towards the east, along the, the jagged coast, towards the outside, overlooking, or the, uh, on a series of cliffs that overlook the ocean. Okay. And we haven't seen anything that... No, towards the, west of, towards the west at the moment, it's mostly uh, tall cliff faces, and at the top of them, you can see, like, destroyed jungle. You know, it looks like it kind of gets out of the, the basin of the river properly. As it kind of goes higher ground. Okay. All right. Thank uh, you, Edinor. Oh, you're very welcome. Are you done? Uh, I'm not as keen as Luna, but I think we might want to descend right about now. <laughs> yes, that sounds about right. So I'll just start. You guys you know, like, with your party? A real tight um, landing as well. Just like a, tuck my wings in just to go like 100 <laughs> miles an hour and then stop. God. <laughs> I think I'd get no. used to something like that, but no. <laughs> well, All it looks right. like we found a few things, I think. Yes. Uh, the Corlua River, surprising no one has dried up. Uh, it runs north to south. And it's now this deep canyon trench. It looks like heading north, there's a clear trail. Something big plowed through it. Um, toward the northeast, there's a split in the mountain. And there are a bunch of what look like these statues heading in that direction. Uh, to the southeast, there's this very bright metallic glimmer. And something wa- large and white flapping in the wind. It might be our wreckage. Um, to the west, the sky is looking a little funky. Kind of greenish yellow. Not sure what to make of that. Hmm. So Considering did we go after? Always daytime. Considering we're in a time where it's always daytime, if there is any change in the sky color, that can be very bad uh, news. And that's the direction from where did you say? To the west. Yeah, I don't know what it means either. There might be some sort of storm system. It's not where the Kiguana are, though. They're in the opposite direction. Could it still be emanating from that um, spear that was just callously thrown? Perhaps. What was that? Could it have been from the spear that was callously thrown? You know, uh, like, I believe you know exactly which one it is. I don't uh. know. <laughs> Yes, this is mm. before we ran into you. Uh, yeah. Yes. Do you think that's still causing a storm? I don't see how it would stop. Maybe we should um, collect that. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, well, let's let's remember why we're out here. We got to yes. find people and we got to find wreckage. So which <laughs> it sounds like those are in two different directions. Which one do we want to go check out first? Well, partially, we should also, it sounds like they were hunting the great large ape. And from the sound of it, it must have trudged a trail north right along the river. So if we're going to try and save the crew, we do that. And then maybe as we swing back, look at the wreckage. I think crew takes priority, though. All right. So quick, quick semicircle. Rescue crew go pick up a spear that caused an issue in the weather system and then the craft? What the fuck? Well, it's <laughs> Why? Well, so, I believe, I don't even know if we'd have, it was very far away. It was back where uh, that fallen city was. Um, so it's on the okay. other side of us. But I think the first focus is maybe the spear after we get everything sorted out because we'll have to get back to the frog grove anyways. Correct. Yeah, mm-hmm. if there's time, because remember, we, we need to get to, we need to fix the ship ASAP and get to um, 
the north. Try to fly our way up there to Dalmasin and uh, so we'll pursue the crew for as long as we can. And then yeah. what's, what's our cutoff then? How many days should we travel? At most. Uh, well, it's only been a few hours, and mm-hmm. it sounds like we can make our way towards those people. What What do you think? Within a day or so, less than uh, a day. Did it seem like that path would take less than a day to traverse northward? The, the northward path, um, you can get to it today. You can probably, so it's about one o'clock. So yeah, you guys can definitely get to it, you know, within a few hours, right? Um, where it goes from there, though, beyond that point, it's hard to say. Well, how, how far, and like estimate from that point to the crevice that we that you saw those people heading towards? It wasn't people, I saw statues. Correct, David, or am yeah, I misunderstanding? Yeah, statues. Oh, nope, I didn't statues. see people. Yeah, so statues similar to the ones in the in the south side see, that you guys I are see. in right now, kind of littering the hill, heading upwards. And those are a they, different direction. Those are yeah, northeast. those are those are northeast. But that that is also the closest one to you. That's very that is quite close to you guys, comparative compared to the um, the trail that you saw to the north. Okay, there is too much talking and thinking. We need to do shit. Listen, Let's I know north. It's split up, but we have enough people. Let's do both. If we take our best trackers, go towards the people who are missing. What happens when you run into the grave eight? We fight or run. There will be other allies there. That's an assumption, though. If they're not there, then we run because they're dead. I don't see why you're so intent on splitting us up. I'm not intent on splitting us up. I'm intent on getting things done as fast as I can. All right, let's go north. (laughs) They start walking north. Okay. Head north. Crash is heading north. Let's head north. One second. One moment. Uh, Oh, whatever. That will be done sooner than later. Sorry. Hey, you're good. Um, okay, so you guys start heading north around, along the canyon trail, right? So along kind of staying within the riverbed, um, making your way. Um, and... Also, like, I grabbed my monkey that I kind of, like, kind of charred. <laughs> Yeah. You've, so oh, you've got your charred monkey with you? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All uh, righty. So you've got can, your monkey with you. Um, can I uh, run break, ahead? Kind of break it down. <laughs> yeah, running ahead like us? Can I run ahead as a, as a wolf, see if uh, eventually I pick up the scent again? That's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, I would like to start tracking again. Okay. The two of you are going to, we're going to kind of go back into the same marching order that we had before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like hoping Chris. to actually move. I was happy. I was hoping to like go like farther scout. away. Be yeah. really further ahead. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Right, so you're in wolf form. Yeah. Okay, Chris, and both we'll, of we'll, you still go ahead and roll survival checks. Can he is he large enough where like, I can ride on the back? No. <laughs> not you a have your bardic inspiration wolf. still, Chris. Just well, yeah, I will use that because I rolled not great. You gotta work out more like a get swole. Nineteen. Thank you, Pam. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I guess what'd you get? 24. 24. Ooh. Okay. Playing yeah. the survival today. We're not just th- surviving. We're thriving. <laughs> not <yet>. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's an overstatement, but. So you guys are walking along kind of the canyons. Um, it goes from being kind of these like flatter grounds than as the, from the mouth of the river into kind of these deeper trenches. Right. And you kind of are walking along, you know, small ledges and stuff, but you can see signs of where some sort of large creature has kind of formed a path through here with both your checks. It is not hard to pick up on this creature at all. Right. And as you're kind of going along, you start to catch that scent again of Raish. Right. Um, You also start to see, you know, remnants, clumps of white fur, right. Deep grooves in rock. Uh, sorry, in rock and um, old tree and debris, right? Um, it continues north. And you, how long are you guys following the, the trail? 
Indefinitely. As long as we come across as something. Long, as long as you've called, <laughs> come across something. Okay, totally fine. Right? So uh, it will go forward for another eight hours. Right? I said it's, it's clear that this creature has been moving for a while. I need uh, everybody has water with them. Mm-hmm. Right? As you kind of go into this next group. Okay. Uh, so if you guys have water, I'm not too worried about it. It is extreme heat, but as long as you have water, you are staving off the need to make any sort of constitution saving throw, right? <laughs> cool. Can I do something as we travel really fast? Absolutely. You guys can talk and do stuff as you're traveling. Uh, Edinor, yes. I think these might be more useful if you use them. And uh, Chris hands you this little ball of iron uh, bands. Uh According to Luna, uh, once a day you can make a ranged attack uh, and attempt to trap something within these. Um, they're the iron bands of binding. Uh-oh. Why, thank you. I believe this should be very useful. I don't have the same ranged opponent as everybody else. So yeah, I figured useful. something. Yeah. front pocket on the other side from my plushie. Okay. Oh. Any other role play or anything while you guys are um, walking over? I guess as I did that, I also accidentally squeezed the plushie. So sure. Good. As you're kind I'm of slipping it I'm... into the belt, it kind of squeezes in against the plushie. What does the plushie <laughs> tell us? What does the plushie tell us? The plushie says... <laughs> I treasure you more than a dragon treasures his hoard. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what was I, that? Oh, sorry. It was a gift. It was a gift from Sarah, I believe. So, yes, uh, it was uh, after we had saved them, and then uh, it's been a, I guess, my good luck charm. It seems to be there. Seems to be other attributes to it as well, but I haven't found use of them as of yet. But uh, occasionally, I'll squeeze it. And, says a funny little line and it makes me think of them so that is always very good to keep sweet. the morale up yeah they're kind of like your family huh yes yes you know it's uh i'm not sure where all of my previous companions are but it is uh they needed me and i guess i needed them as well so it's always good to have that sweet Take an inspiration for being a good dude. <laughs> <laughs> good dude in <inspo. laughs> Edinor, do you have family? I think so. I'm afraid they're all dead, though. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. It's understandable. I mean, a lot of people died. I think 80% of the world population did, so not alone. No. That doesn't make it less tragic. That is true. That is true, but we can make it better. We have to be positive. All I remember when I was landing is that I, that is my mission. Try and help be better. Did Tazrin tell you to do that? Yes. Tazrin was one of the voices in my head. Tazrin among the many. Did that real tell you anything? Well, I do not believe Thadril interacted with me right before, but I'm still regaining, yes, all my thought processes. It hasn't, I haven't had much time to really rest and meditate on everything that has happened. Maybe I'll remember something, but I, not immediately when I was cast into this world. From the sky and hit my head violently. But we shall see. I, I just, I, I, we still have to have a conversation about what you said. I just, I'm just not simply sass the god of creation. God of creation didn't tell me that's what he was, to be well, fair. Most gods aren't are going to tell you what they are. That's, I mean, think about it. They're immortal beings. They have to have fun. So, I get bored from time to time. So how 
recently was it again that you saw that real? It's a good question. No Sometime within the know. past two months. <laughs> yes, I'm just curious if it was prior to the outbreak or No, post. it was it was during. It was while I was on that vessel. Interesting. I wonder why Thatril would be there. Vexing. There's so much knowledge that I need. But we'll learn it. But I appreciate you all as my companions now. So we we'll just have to be a new family, per se. And now we must hunt this. I'm just hoping that this crew is not going to be all really dealt with by this great ape. Have you seen any traces of the crew? Or is it just traces of the ape? As you're tracking. So far we've only track. gotten the hair, correct? Yeah. Of the ape? Of the ape. Hair and gashes. Right? You had the gashes. scent of Rashi, didn't you? Yeah, we got the scent of Rash. So we're following that. Yeah. It's faint, but it's you, you can follow it. Okay. Any other role play or anything? As you guys are making your way through. I'll, I'll take out another leaf and I'm, I'll do something similar where I have it in my hand. I'll cast origami. It'll form into flower. And I'll go to Pim and I'll show her this and say, See, this is a magical flower that opens and closes based on the time of day. At least how it used to be. When you're doing, you showed me your device. You're trying to create oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a working clock. So next time we're working on it again, uh, let me know. We can cast this and sort of get a starting point oh, oh, where to set it to. That's brilliant. Luna, you're one of the smartest people I know. Slight like blush, then stops for a second. <laughs> uh, thank you. Try not to blow his head, blow her head up too large. No, no. <laughs> Phrase is nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You guys make it through. Um, it's another about. It starts to get to the point where you go. You guys are getting ready to rest. You've been hiking for a long time on the trail of this creature, and just as you are getting near to that point, Lycus, you you being somewhat ahead by several miles, being a little bit faster than everybody, right? You are, you know, further ahead and off in the distance, you can see you're coming up to where the river seems to split. There is a an offshoot of the river that kind of heads off towards the northeast right and then there's another part of it that kind of takes up a slight angle towards the northwest right the scent however that you are tracking continues directly forward towards the other bank now the group of you it is getting to the point where you guys are going to need to rest do you want to rest or do you want to push through a bit i would want to rest uh, yeah i'll tell i'll tell everyone based on the flower that's we have gone, we have been traveling for quite some time now. I could push through. I don't recommend it. We might not be at our best fighting shape. I, I, I agree. We should definitely rest. Um, That's the four of you are going to rest. Lycus, you're somewhat ahead. I can when only message 120 feet. Yeah. <laughs> I am not going to rest you. yet. Uh, not not very far. Um, I I want the. Uh, what's the minimal amount of time we need to sleep to get a, like a rest in? Eight hours. Eight hours. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I think I just an elf. Yeah. Unless you're an elf. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or a warforged. Or a warforged. <laughs> I think while everybody is sitting down to rest, I want to, uh, at least for the first hour of everyone's shit, uh, I'm assuming we sleep in shifts, uh, I want to do a perimeter and see if I can pick up anything. Okay, sure. 
Uh, are you looking for anything in particular? Uh, uh, I'm looking at this point because we've come across a lot of fur. Uh, mm-hmm. See if there's any scent of the the great ape nearby. See okay. if we're in a, a safe space okay. uh, to rest. Uh, and see for any signs of battle. See if uh, at any point nearby there is, you know, death, blood, whatever. See if sure. our, our, the people we're looking for are still alive, essentially. Okay, sure. All right, go ahead. Uh, roll me, let's see. Let's call that survival. Right. Survival or perception, your flavor, your choice. Perception, because I have advantage with a wolf. <laughs> yeah, that's true for for smelling. But yes. Hey, I'm a sniffer. Yeah. You're a sniffer, and, and honestly, it's not hard because as you're kind of going along here, you do start to catch like a heavier scent. You know, now that you've passed some of these fur clumps, right? There is the scent of kind of dry clay, right? It's got that very earthy kind of smell. Right, that kind of lingers a lot around lots of this, but the scent of Raish does start to become a little bit more potent, right? And so does the smell of ape, or at least the the, the same white fur that you tracked earlier, right? Now that you've had had a chance to smell that, you can tell it's coming like almost yeah again directly north towards the kind of towards the other bank, right? It's For the most part, where you guys are kind of at, there are just like a series of ledges going down towards the bottom of the trench, right? The bottom of what used to be the riverbed. The rocks are all dry and the clay on the floor is all cracked, right? But you can kind of see for a good ways out and you can kind of see the embankment far in the distance on the other side. And you just have this sense that that's kind of the direction to go as you can even see in like clay paw prints of you know, a large, you know, uh, primate ape-like hand on different parts of stones, different parts of branches, you know, um, heading in that direction. Okay. So just to make sure they got, I I was able to defer, determine that they got to the other side of the embankment. They they went to the wars embankment, other side or not, you'd have to get to the embankment to find out. Right. And that's going to be several hours of travel yet. Okay. Um, and I will say, as you guys are about to rest, right? So you kind of turn back and kind of head back towards the party at that point, or do you yeah. continue? No, after after doing that, after they've you know situated to set up camp, I'll, I'll return. Heading back, um, you guys are about to set up camp, but before you do, I do want to mention the sky is becoming more greenish, more yellowish, again, kind of continuing from the west. Whatever weather movement seems to be kind of moving along still, the wind continues to die down lower and lower. Hmm. What do we think that means? Well, that's Best the weather. Be at full rest, because whatever it is, I do not feel it is good. Perhaps we should... Uh... Maybe try, is there a space we can tuck in um, by near a rock or a cliff to have some semblance of yeah, shelter? Yeah, there are lots of there are lots of cliffs and stuff around as you guys are kind of you know walking along, sorry, kind of the edge, the outside, the interior of several cliffs. You know, making okay. your way along the riverbank. Um, Let's tuck into one of those. Yeah, you like sure. cave-like areas. Or yeah, you can find like a little cave-like area. Right, you guys can uh, head in there. As I, as I come back, as I turn back. Uh, walk into our camp as a, as a man. Uh, I think I want to mention to everybody, uh, I'm not sure if you've seen, but it looks like a thunderstorm's coming. Usually don't yes. see. That doesn't yeah. mean they can, though, does it? It might wash away the scent. I'm worried about that. Can you tell us more about that spear that you think may have caused it? Yeah. Well, uh, a friend of mine uh, appeared, and after a bit, someone came chasing for her. Uh, offered her great and immeasurable power if she gripped the spear and allowed herself to be overtaken by some god. I don't know. What god? Uh, I don't know. It looked ugly and sounded dumb. Great. It was actually a very beautiful. beautiful. You know? Do you know the name, Ednor? Uh, yes. Let me uh, scrape through my memory. Uh, give me one moment. But to continue explaining the situation, right, as well, I scrape through my memory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Point is, when she did so, a storm came in. It ripped the roof, it, it ripped the entire ship apart. And she was uh, about to be taken, possessed by this thing. Uh, it didn't feel right. So I took the spear, kicked her out, and told the god to go to hell. Uh, it seemed like hmm. the storm was following the spear, though. So I chucked it to try and keep the people who were with safe. Well, if that's what's causing the storm, then I fear people aren't safe. What I fear is that someone has it. Mm. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Well, I'm more worried about who. She didn't seem too happy. Something to keep in mind as well is that maybe that thunderstorm was happening because you weren't used to controlling it. Something to consider as well. Well, let's just try to get through the night or next eight hours. And we'll keep an eye on it. That's all. I'm going to assume Lycus and Cress are the two who are going to spy a campsite for us. Um, I can do four oh, hours of watch. I imagine Lycus can only do two if he needs a long rest. No, no, no. Just to kind of locate a spot to, to that find would one. be oh, yeah, oh, pretty sick. secure. And yeah. Stuff. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Roll survival checks. Two of you, please. Advantage assisting. Wait, what was that? Adv- at advantage assisting. Or sorry. One of you roll at advantage or both of you roll independent. Did you both roll already? We don't, know the, we don't know the rules, so we can still decide. I have a, I have a plus them. three. What do you have? Plus seven. Take it. Okay. okay. At advantage. Yep. Okay. 26. Okay. Yeah. Easily enough, you're able to find like a little, a little kind of shelf, right? A couple of boulders that maybe kind of, you know, were once underwater, right? But kind of created like a little inlet, right? You guys can kind of tuck in there. Um, in here, there are close towards the entrance of the cave. Right, it's pretty dry. So, but as you get towards the back, it actually gets kind of cool, right? There's actually a you know um, still a little bit of moss and stuff on the wall, right? Uh, but it looks like it will do for a campsite. And it doesn't seem to be occupied. It doesn't seem to be occupied. Okay. Right. Uh, the the storm. Does it look like it's gonna be here soon? Roll me a nature check. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a very uh, dumb question. Or you know, can I roll with advantage? Because it's a storm. That's one of the few things that I've uh, paid attention to as a as a sailor. I will say, it's not a hard check given your given your background. I'm gonna just DC. It's not a hard check. What did you get? Was it that bad? It I rolled an eleven, but I have a minus oh. one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's it's a it's a fairly even check. I will say at this point, as you guys are just getting in to the into the cave, the sky is now like almost yellow above you, right? Um, it's no longer blue. You can tell that whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen easily before you make it across to the next bank, right? So okay. probably it's going to hit while you're in this cave. You guys are going to be resting in this cave. All right. Okay. Uh, I want to take first watch then. I'll take first as well. I'll take second and third. I'll take third or second with uh, with Chris. Chris. Okay. All right. Well, tell you what. How about we call it here for today, and we'll pick up uh, with you guys in this little cave. You know, on your watches. So we have Edinor was doing first. Edinor and Lycus. Edinor and Lycus. Yep. Edinor and Lycus on first. So Luna, you get to sleep through the night. Okay. Four oh, hours it's... of it. Wait. Yeah. I just pretty much chill. I, I'll, I'll join. Sure. Isn't there? Edinor there's the ladies. Gotta there's be three, three watches, watches, right? Yeah. If she trances for the first for four, um, four yeah. hours, then she can do the third with me too. Gotcha. So then, yeah, Luna can do the third watch. Hey, three Press. of us could just hang out. Yeah, just Brona, just lady down. Team fuck shit up again. 
<laughs> All right, cool. So we got watches. You guys are camped out in a cave, just going to kind of weather down, hunker down as some sort of weather system seems to be passing. Um, you have an idea, at least of where for now, the trail of the great white ape kind of continues, right? Mm-hmm. You've got some bits of salvage and you've explored the jungle a little bit today. All right. So we're going to pick up with the, everything that happens next, next time. All right. So thanks for All playing, right. guys. Keep it locked here, everybody. Uh, Delta Crypt channel. Catch our other stuff, right? We've got Tales from Terra. We've got Judging Nerd Culture. Ollie, we've got the Elden Ring playthroughs, right? Yeah, I just started re- recording that because uh, four episodes deleted forever. Oh! Uh, and I'm going to make back up. Oh, no. Right. That's a bummer. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We will catch you around. Peace. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.